All right, so let's jump right into it. We'll start with our current impressions of patch 1.10. So, uh, Gabri, uh, quick question. A lot of people have been referring to this patch as the Gabri patch. Do you uh, still agree with that sentiment or do you disagree? Tell me your thoughts. Uh, I don't know, like who kept saying, but basically it's like a community <laughs> effort. I was basically, you know, maybe leading that. Um, how about this? It's the little Gabri's patch. You know, my brother helped me with it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, no, no, but this is a community effort. Mm -hmm. I did put forward a lot of the work, most of it there. I don't like to be named after me only. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's basically thanks for <laughs> saving PvP, Gabri. <laughs> mm. I truly appreciate that. No, does like people are hunting me down now. There are people who hate the change. Well, like some of the similarities <laughs> between your mod and the current patch, you know, it's kind of uncanny. Some of the similarities. Oh no, no, the similarities. Like, let me tell you something. The changes are from the things we told them. Like, you get what I'm saying? It's not. Mm -hmm. There's no hidden something hidden there. Even to the decimal, the multipliers were used the same numbers I use in the video. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's not that. Like, it's it's true. They did change a lot sim based on that mm -hmm. but it's not just that one video it's also the things that we there were some things that we used to send them back in the day when the game started um and we were thinking uh, they gave up on it um the video i feel like what happened those stuff we gave them they 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 they, they, they got them they started to work on them they tried to fix the game based on that but they didn't know how to go uh, about it right mm -hmm. then the video like gave them a visual representation on how to do it does that make sense and mm -hmm. that's why we started we seen it after that uh but it's not just because of the video it's a lot of things we did from the beginning mm -hmm. uh when i was busy with didn't the, i tell you about the japanese guy gabri who, yeah uh, that too, sent that you too. The, the stuff? yep yeah. that too that too uh gina well, was well, saying well, I am ultimately like Gabri's, Gabri's vid and every stuff got sent by some dude who translated like support tickets and sent them to from software mm -hmm. in japanese so it's likely I, the case why it actually changed yeah. Okay, but maybe you're supposed to get in contact with that person then. Yeah, I am in contact with him. Oh, well, okay, but like Gabri, then maybe you're supposed to. But there's also the Elder Ring community manager is marvelous. Like she's not hidden. She's she's on Twitter, and anyone can text her, and you know she'll she'll usually answer if you if you hit her up. Very good but, person. They, they they've been doing a lot of things in the behind the scenes. Like for, for example, like the um, after the pa after the thing uh, the patch released. I emailed them and then like they um, they were thank like yeah the community uh, this is the effort of the community like it's it's official like you know they agree on it too, but the thing is uh, the, I want to jump in on one thing important that's important G9 and I were talking about like now we know they actually clearly like listening right there's something we can do about it it's not just a few people like this is clear as day that. Uh, the changes, um, you know, the changes basically, are, they've been listening to them, right? It can't be more clear than this. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it can't be just a few people that push for it anymore, right? Like, you know, we can do much more and ask for even bigger things like six player limit and, you know, who knows, covenants or whatever, right? Um, it's just a matter of like relaying it now, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have the guy from Japanese, like that, what the connection uh, Jinan has, and then we can have more content creators mm -hmm. uh, produce some something huge to, you know, uh, I, I think the best part change, about the community though, now it, compared to well, the best part sorry. about the community compared to previous games is that we're giving FromSoft that visual, like we're making the mods, we're we're doing the podcasts, and I feel like a lot of that stuff we didn't have with Dark Souls Three or prior games. You know, they didn't have any kind of visual to look at, but now that they have that visual, we're making their job a lot easier. I mean, like being absolutely honest, if the entire thing with Gabri's patch is mostly because there is like that one japanese guy that decided to 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 make the uh, translation and then send it directly to them from software then uh, just doing the videos and post podcasts and so on like it's not going to make it yeah it's just mm -hmm. that that essentially means that you cannot really have the proper communication without using the japanese side mm -hmm. So yeah, like that's uh, that, that's, that's like... what no the video is still important. Why? Because look, they, they they it's a visual representation, like not a podcast. I'm not talking about I'm talking about like a detailed video showing what needs to be done little by little, like, mm -hmm. right? That's what's needed, and then mm -hmm. a podcast just for us to talk about what we need to do when we should we do. I I feel like mm -hmm. that's what 
the biggest thing we need to take away. But in terms of the video, it's very important. And that thing is um, is part of it too. Like imagine like us doing all this from the, the you know they're getting their, like the the, uh, the work sent to them through the website and stuff like that and all that kind of things, right? And then they get it from this guy's side, you know, translated. So like they get the work from all sides, and then it, that's how they receive. That's how they realize. Oh, you know what? Everybody's asking for it, right? Like let's just do this, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, right? So uh, the video is still important to show them how to do it, and to make it easy for them to relay by even having the you know Japanese uh, people in our community to relay as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, but that's that's my point. It's, it's still like that essentially means it is worth to look into just finding people from the Japanese community that yeah. you can yep. collab- collaborate yep. with. Yeah, agreed. So, agreed. so yeah, that's that's important thing. Another thing is told like that. Sadly, everything that they had is footage of the video. Imagine like how much better this patch could be if they had actually files. Uh, yeah. See, I, yeah, I, yeah. I I told Emir, and I don't know how viable this is. Like, if Emir can like. Send the source code for the spectator mode. Send that to FromSoft so mm-hmm. they can somehow copy pass it into the arena. That would be amazing. I mean, I, uh, they have you know, they have superior they, their system is way superior than what right. we're gonna show. Them. We're using third party tools just to let you guys know. Like but, what, what they what they have is way superior. It's like it looks different in their side than our side. Just right. a visual video is more than enough. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal to have that. Mm-hmm. But what what we could do like the video is good and then. I think we need to uh, convince them to get some of our community members. Like th- there has to be a way to try to convince them as much as possible to have some of our community members, some people we know that are know with the games and everything, to be playtesters. Just being playtesters will be like monumental, like huge, just to for all this. You know, like uh, <laughs> imagine you still like you've been there or G or anybody from our community, like being there as testing how things work and give them direct feedback to their face as they're asking you, what do you guys think? That's that's the difference. That's the kind of things that's going to change things. But I don't know. I mean, who, what kind of you know, if the have. corporative structure works in the way that they need like physical contracts and so on, then like it is literally impossible to do. Like that's, you know, sad reality of the fact like it is actually corporation, yeah? Like it is like mm-hmm. from software and Bandai Namco, those are essentially corporations that are mm-hmm. like working with a certain structures that, mm-hmm just cannot be skipped through like i like so so yeah it might be the biggest problem here yeah it just it would be nice if for example souls games would be managed by like a squad of five guys and like you know you would have like a small indie studio then like they can do whatever they want yeah but in mm-hmm. in such case that that's why like you know the the way of of communication have to be held also on, on a kind of like structurized corporative level that's why like they're like we currently have uh the the only way of communication from software is just essentially through the publisher yeah for like a uh, regular guy like us but yeah like for example someone from the from japan might have like completely different way of approaching this thing so so yeah like first and for the most what is important is to finally figure out how to communicate because this is something that honestly we struggle with for I don't know, like, ever since Dark Souls 3, like, before Dark Souls 3, no one ever fucking bothered about talking to From Software, honestly. Mm. So, like, it's it's still, like, for I don't know how many years it was, like, the, the game was released in 2016, I guess, like, uh, uh, the first attempts to communicate with From Software, I remember there was, like, a big topic about uh, stuff related to Poise. It was probably, like, before even 2017. So it is essentially, like, that many years yeah of of attempts and we still are in the fucking forest yeah and like the the essentially ultimately what i want to pay attention to the the reason why uh the gabri's video reached from software and had its actual like effect in action is just because someone from the country of developers mm-hmm. actually helped with that mm-hmm. without yeah. that person like we most likely wouldn't have anything yeah. so like you know that's my my point is that we fucking suck and we we have to st- to stop being fucking dog shit at communicating with these developers the, the, the language barrier is the biggest roadblock but that's it's why we do have barrier. bandai as a middleman no, no, no. it's not just a language barrier and i'll be quite frank i don't know i don't want to sound like you know aggressive about it but it's not just language barrier it's also a lot of content creators who have a lot of influence they have a lot of 
views they if they do push they enjoy the pvp too they're not trying to do something related to giving proper feedback um i don't know because they're worried about the channel or something like that i don't know why they would be worried but or maybe they're not sure if it's even works but now more than ever this is the perfect like exam to show yeah it works there's really no excuse i think that's the problem what we have and um and I think we could make a like one ultimate video with everything needed, the most professional video like we could make, you know, that has everything the community agrees that it needs. I'm I'm not talking about balance. Balance is very little compared mm-hmm. to the things we need, like six player limit. You know, imagine if the Ruin Arc system worked like the Ember and the Humanity system, right? Yeah. For invasion yeah. and stuff like this is very important that we could show, uh, you know, word it up properly and have our bigger people in the community to push for it. And everybody gains from that. They even them because they, that's their content is based on the uh, you know like souls PvP souls stuff. They even gain from that. So it's just mm-hmm. a matter of doing it now. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, before we go into the the full topic, because I feel like we are touching on some of it. Um, I just want to hear like general i general impressions about the current balance right now of patch one point ten before we move on. So uh, anyone else wanna? Like give their thoughts on one on one point ten. Uh, I've been I've been enjoying it uh, mm-hmm. as somebody who did not enjoy having to uh, bend every build to the will of the passive poise system of before, just to not get stunned. Now that a lot a lot of new weapons on the board have. Uh, are, are now that a lot of new weapons and setups were actually a threat yeah. like just just an actual threat from their r1s to their r2s and neutral may has made the non-poise havers or non-passive poise havers excuse me uh ha- get a lot more out of their interactions like out of neutral more specifically but invading uh especially now if you go harder into fashion if you want to wear like the the non uh, steel oriented armor pieces if you wanted to wear cloth if you want <laughs> no idea <laughs> how could you uh, not wear no no steel. i don't mean steel ofsky i mean uh-huh, like uh-huh. steel iron yeah. armor steel uh-huh. uh-huh. sure i don't know uh, yeah. like... no no i don't i don't mean steel ofsky so i'm talking about the Albert mean, Nurkan too <laughs> I, I mean uh-huh. the material steel the material right. material look at him backing off him material steel Classic. no 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 i was i i I understood what I was, what yes, I, what yes, I was referring yes. to. My passion mm-hmm. is shit. I got you, man. I got mm-hmm. you. No, no, no. I mean, I, I could critique fashion uh, <laughs> about, <laughs> about, about the past <laughs> meta, but I'm not. But like, you know, not. now that you get you can get hit stun from the first hit, like, how does like like getting blended from like a gank, like, does the balance feel better or worse now in invasions? The it it can. <sighs> Honestly, invasion still will need to take more time to figure out like what are the sweatier ganks doing, what are co-opers doing. Uh, of course, there are some uh, blender setups, but blenders are always possible no matter what weapons they're using or what ashes of war that they're using. What what is important is like what can invaders do to either evade the, those blenders or defend mm-hmm. against it. Can they poise through it? Like what, uh, just because somebody has Storm Stomp, do you have a better poise option that can get out of that mm-hmm. now due to how hyper armor works now, due to mm-hmm. how, like, you can you stamp through what they're doing? Can you storm mm-hmm. assault through what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's been just interesting to sort of relearn all of that again, just to figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, Dragon Breath is still going to be an issue until they fix that. Uh, mm-hmm. my, my overall impression before I go a bit to ham is uh, just that they, if you look at the table and the rug that is this this game and how it operates online with co-op and multiplayer, what they effectively did was they just took out the foundation and replaced it with a new rug, but now you still actually need to change the, the fixtures of the table and the chair because the, you know, offhand... S stock offhand clean rod is still pretty freaking powerful. Uh, the dual straight swords, dual spears are pretty freaking powerful. And mm-hmm. I thought that this uh, patch would like, I thought this patch would like buff the weaker setups, like the dual handed axes or maces or flails. And no, because those are still slow. They have poor tracking. They have poor range. Now they, now they just because they changed 
something fundamental about a game, they still need to go into the minutia mm -hmm. and now change, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, mm -hmm. tweak the 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 good move sets and mm -hmm. tweak the bad move sets and make them better. Yeah. Uh, if anything, what this new patch has told me is that. Or I get the impression that a skeleton crew is working on post-release patches for the game, and they clearly have a majority of their team working on Armored Core 6. They have a majority of their team working on DLC, and we will probably get more substantial patches after after mm -hmm. Armored Core 6, mm -hmm. and once the DLC actually arrives, because uh, if we look to our history of how they managed Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 2, the biggest patches that actually, like, fundamentally changed how those games work were when DLCs finally mm -hmm. dropped. Um, Gina, say something real quick. On I want to say something on the last one because I'm still fresh on this. I just made a video on it and I'll clear a few things. Uh -huh. uh, Gina, you, you go say something real quick. <laughs> I, I think about the invasion. I don't think it's too early to say. I, I always feel like people get this wrong. Like fundamentally, the game, even if you can poise break, I mean, it goes both ways. Like it's easier to turn and burn for an invader. I, it, I would not even say it's harder to uh, get, or it's easier to get blended either, uh, because you still would get blended almost the exact same way before. So honestly, I don't think like changes like this affect invasion as much as people would like to make it seem. I really think it affects dueling more than invading. Invading is more affected by like, um, uh, like I always I always look at it this way. Like invasion is more about like macro. And dueling is more about micromanagement. So when it comes to invasions, honestly, it would change a lot more if they like made it so that you can't turn off the taunter stone while mm. you're invading a party, or if they made it so that you could invade with or a six-player limit or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a six-player limit with like a second invader yep. against a group of three or four. That's mm. what is going to affect yep. invasion yep. for the most part, not necessarily like these balance changes that affects mm -hmm. more like the 1v1 aspect of the game more than the multi multi-target aspect yes it does have an impact in terms of like gameplay but in the grand scheme of things is it harder or easier probably the same really mm -hmm. it's different honestly but mm -hmm. i think this is mm -hmm. how you can describe it overall this entire like game yeah right now like elden ring Essentially, the version of the game on the PC, like the application version, is not 1.10. It's 2.0. And I think this is a pretty good description of what this game actually is. It's literally mm -hmm. Elden Ring 2.0. Mm. It's like, co like you know, building the structure from the scratch, essentially. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just finished making a video related to this, and I just want to like ask a few questions. You know, it was just to hit a home, like what do you, you know, like to get an idea. Jim earlier said something about how like the some of the meta weapons they were uh, they became stronger you know and some of the mm -hmm. you know the off meta stuff. If I were to ask you, it's like overall, you do you agree that the you know what's decided you know what's strong and what's weak is based on matchups in general, like uh, as a general rule to like based on matchups, right? Do you agree like in the in the bigger grand scheme of things, like how much matchups this thing is better against? You know, like it's able to beat this weapon easier or harder that kind of thing do you agree with me on that one yeah yeah if you were to th th that's the nuance of it right like uh in a vacuum you can say that like the the shunter is really powerful but the moment that you put it up against something that could maybe shut it down you know that that will affect how it operates like, like that recovery. operates right yeah yeah the reason why i'm asking this is because look I, 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 powers... before you answer though i, I just want to disagree real quick because there's weapons that just have good matchups there's no bad matchups against them again like mm. still just like how back in dark souls 3 pk and murky didn't have any bad matchups there's still yep. some of that here like double spear like what's a bad matchup for double spear right now mm -hmm. it, it, someone I think that uh, uses brain <laughs> so, so so basically the reason why i'm saying this is look and and, and the, be previous to this patch a power st stance spear versus a power stance i mean and a power stance uh, so, let's say a sword power stance sword versus a one-handed stray sword previously did the one hand set like you know in, in regards to how the game was played did the one-handed uh, stray sword to the chance like in terms of uh, being able to fight a power stance sword like how how you a, a one-handed stray sword when a fight against a power sand sword, um, 
did this uh, one hand tracer require it to roll every time a, a L1 user of the PowerSense uh, sword? That's the thing, Gabriel. Like in the big picture, yes, most setups are like what you described, but not all of them. That's kind of the point. So you can't like point out like the, the, the sword example because like the question is like, are every setup like that? The answer is no. There's some exceptions like the spears. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, the, the reason. reason no, no, like uh -huh. the, I'm, I'm gonna get to the point. I know what you're saying, but like I'm gonna get to the point. The reason I'm saying this, it's not to say even the one hand stray, so it's not to say it's uh, anywhere close to, you know, power sand swords, like in, in, under like if you weight them together, right? But before the matchup was basically, if if it's not the ones that are able to stun you, all the time stuns your passive boys. If it's not the one that deals a lot of damage and it's a fast attack, and if it's not, it doesn't have low recovery, you did not stand a chance. It's as if you ex it didn't exist in terms of the matchups, right? Right now, it's as if you got new players in the block, but they're not as good as the new, uh, like the old ones. But before, it did, didn't even exist. Does that make sense? That's how it felt like. With yeah, like the, the current patch, I think they, they did what they attempted to in the patch 1.09. Because in patch 1.09, they tried to bring bad weapons a little bit closer to like uh, good weapons. And I think like they kind of failed miserably because literally only like uh, two weapon categories like were somewhat affected. In this patch, they actually kind of nailed that in the meaning that you can actually, as a let's say for a fun player, get yourself that one handed straight sword and be on more equal field than someone that is utilizing something decent, yeah? Mm -hmm. yes. But there is like there is a the balance is still it's, off. Uh, yeah, like the damage uh, needs to be nerfed, all that stuff. Like you get what I'm saying? I'm not disagreeing there, but I'm talking about that. Like to nail on that aspect that Jim mentioned in the beginning, how he had to play around passive boys and stuff like that. That's that's the issue with it. Before, in older games that had passive boys, you know what I mean, and which are few if you really think about it, as the front load the passive boys, it was only Dark Souls 1, really, right? Well, even Dark Souls the, 2 as well, yeah. But but yeah. Dark Souls 2 was not a center of combat for passive boys. Mm -hmm. It was not like as a central theme of it. Well, you know I mean? that's, 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 that's correct, but for a completely different reason. Like, the, the way, like, this is actually, the system from Dark Souls 2 is like completely different. There is no poise regeneration for once, like in the other games. Like in, in Dark Souls 3, 1 and Elden Ring, you regenerate your poise upon break. And yeah. in Dark Souls 2, it wasn't the case. Like it was completely different in my honest opinion, better system. Because like, if for example, let's assume you had like in Dark Souls 2, one of the strongest offhand tools if not the strongest, is Dagger. And the way how Dagger like is an issue overall is like it's just like super fast and reactable essentially tool that was breaking you in one unless you had certain poise check. But technically, if you are going to stack the poise under the system of, for example, like Dark Souls 3, the Dark Souls 2 dagger would be not an issue at all, but it would end up like in the situation everyone would be just stuck in poise. But because it regenerates slowly, then you know, like it is always worth to have poise. But as you as you say, this is not like a main theme. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah, just something that helps you additionally. I, 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 exactly. That's what I want to nail. I want to nail this aspect because the, the, when it's in the front center. Even Dark Souls 1, like this is what the issue, in Dark Souls 1, it was front and center, but you had a universal way to basically force respect mm -hmm. through kick and through backstabs being instant. Elden Ring did not have any of those. It's, if the weapon didn't have the ability to force respect, meaning like if you run in front of them, you know, casually without caring, like uh, if it didn't have it, it became shit. It became trash weapon. Don't use that weapon, right? And if it did have it, based on the three categories I mentioned earlier, then those become meta, right? That's the problem with Elden Ring previously. You're you're stuck to use these specific things because you you that's the only ones that work. Remember one time, still how you said power sense ray so it is good because it's fun. Why is it fun? Because you're able to the, the opponent is able to get scared of your L1 to like they, you can space them. You can play the spacing game, which is you know the other ones you can't play the spacing game. They're 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 bad, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's that's 
core that's a core problem with passive poise when it's well, a, 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 the front system you know I, mean, I think one thing that we're ignoring um the, you know the current patch the changes to hyper armor and passive poise it did level the playing field for a lot of weapons but one thing that can't be ignored is just the move sets themselves like for colossal weapons that move set is just bad on all fronts the crouch attack is bad the roll attack is bad the r1s are slow like that whole weapon class needs like a revamp for its move set and i feel like that's something that needs to be addressed like actually maybe making additions to the move sets like having a forward r1 attack like we did in the previous games maybe like have an input for pressing r1 and r2 at the same time like but that's asking like, a lot like making changes to whole move sets or making additional attacks like that's asking a lot but it's I feel not like really something that's it's, necessary it's, it's not it's not hard in on that go ahead jay yeah I, th I think uh, for the colossal, like colossal, colossal, the big weapons, those definitely need more love. But mm -hmm. I, I think it's actually not that far from like having every weapon have like genuinely viable options. Because just for instance, if you, <clears throat> sorry, if you take any hyper armor weapon that's like uh, kind of okay ish or bad, like uh, take for instance, like. Um, a great sword or like even a two-handed halberd which yes it has a good running attack but like what else like aside from the poise like these weapons are not necessarily best at roll catching like if you take any of the bigger weapons they're just not going to perform as well for roll catch roll mm -hmm. catching because all of their attacks are reactable to your point but now that you have like let, let's say flame strike that always poise break the moment you get inside position on your opponent which is not hard to do with the current poise system yes and you get a very legit chance at roll catching with let's say a flame strike so on top of that you also have the option in this game to infuse your weapon with poison to have uh, rod bundles and the build up for status is actually crazy in this game as well so given those things it's actually not a fair comparison with any of the previous Souls game, even if the moveset technically is worse, because you have a lot more options that are legitimately viable if you want to push it that way. Like yeah. I said, though, the only exception to that would definitely be the Colossals, because I don't think they're, like, fast enough, and mm -hmm. even if they have the extra, like, hyper armor defense uh, that the others don't, I still feel like they're lacking behind in damage as well. Yes. And options too. Options too, uh, options too yeah. from Ash yeah. of Wars. Like they don't have Actually, that. Yeah, much. yeah, exactly. Well, the reason why I didn't put them with the, the other uh, primary weapons was because they don't have access to Flame Strike. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this has kind of been mentioned in previous podcasts. Like I feel like every weapon needs some kind of viable roll catch option. Um, yeah, this is this is what gem. I did in, in the this is what I did in the mod. Like there there were general changes that would improve every weapon. Like when when we when in the mod, I didn't go, hey, I want this weapon to be this. I went, no, no, we didn't do that. We went on a general scale to like uh, to uh, to patch uh, like you know to mod the thing. So what we did, we made it like okay, every single crouch attack should be the fastest option. A specific speed, we look at what worked in terms of speed, which was really good, like like a serpent hunter or something like that, you know, that kind of speed. And then we we look at okay. Uh, so this is good. So now anything that's uh, not that speed, we make sure we give it similar range speed. So like a colossal weapon now would get similar sp uh, speed as that one, right? Mm -hmm. But then its damage will be nerfed like by a lot. Its tracking is weaker, so you can strafe it. So it, 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 this allows a weapon to be really good in combat, no matter what it is, because it always has that option that we were talking about, like as a fast option. But it doesn't turn it into, okay, now you have to use this attack because it's the fastest why would you use anything else right because it has weaknesses the, the stuff like this are general changes and it's not hard to do like it's, it's mm -hmm. based on what hal did like uh, how we how we did it he would write a script um like a write a script in general if a weapon has this the speed of uh hitbox make sure it starts from this hitbox that kind of thing like just i'm just paraphrasing and then that's it he lists all the weapons and then you know he changes it that, that way like it's not hard to do so in, in general like to make weapons uh, balance across the board it's it's like, technically it's not as hard as we make it out to be you know just make sure I, like... I think overall the, the issue of for example colossal weapons is uh, the fact that initial design was so it would be poise breaker 
mm-hmm. and with the thought process of Poise Breaker in PvE. Because these mm-hmm. weapons are fucking amazing in PvE. Yeah. Yeah. They are absolutely fantastic. They are dealing like the most of the posture damage in the PvE, like dealing mm-hmm. like that that poise damage of of like level 18 or something like that. It's like I, I think this is the highest value that you can have on the neutral attack. Yeah, that, it's that's like another very, important thing. The yeah, game it's, it's the, like, these weapons yeah. were made for PvE first and then PvP after the fact, you know, like these 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 changes, the patches for PvP, it comes after release, but initially all these weapons were designed for PvE first, and that's why we get our initial issues at launch. I don't know about that, honestly. Like uh, there's some weapons that are clearly like made with some some player versus player aspect in mind, like just mm-hmm. the fact that some of them are easily strafable. Like, uh, I don't believe for a second that the Halberd class was made with PVE in mind. Like, it it's just actually very good like point a weapon with that, that was designed yeah. on purpose. <laughs> then you get thrusting swords who has like a uh, sweep attack on a thrusting attack it's, it pisses me off every time no i, I, yeah. I think it's just made by different people like yeah, i think yeah, like they, there's just like a i've been saying this for a while i really think that their philosophy is mm. i believe in you guys you guys have fun create whatever you want it's going to be in the game that's probably like mm-hmm. the message to the devs and then mm-hmm. whoever creates the weapon there's going to be some some dev that knows mm-hmm. what's up and another one that just yeah. doesn't care and I, I, I would like to remind from soft because in one of the previous patches i think it was 1.09 there was a patch note that said they changed thrusting sword hitboxes but that change never actually went through. I just want to let, I want to remind oh, from Soft and Bandai, yes, yes. I want to remind yeah, them that that change, you, that change never made it into the game. You guys still have to fix sourcing weapons. Do you know how how big that would be? Because look, in, in the files, it's it has the same hitbox as the Stray Sword, mm-hmm. which is like three point something. Four yeah, point, uh, Amir, four Amir made a video on it. He showed like the whole visual and everything for, for Bandai yeah. to see. The heavy thrusting sword is like i think more than half uh like it's less by the uh, more than half you know what i'm saying like that's how it should have been similar to that is what i'm trying to say you know what mm-hmm. i mean and that's why you're able to kind of strafe the heavy thrusting sword way easier than anything about the uh, thrusting mm-hmm. sword uh mm-hmm. yeah that, that that needs to be done <laughs> yeah and I, I i don't want like from soft to get comfortable like they think they fixed it because it was in a patch note but they really didn't and so <laughs> let that be out there that that whole weapon class still needs adjusting um i would like to move into uh addressing like more fundamental issues with the game like connectivity six player worlds uh, arenas and all that um so so, uh, starting before you you move on i would like to uh to add some stuff that gabri about what gabri was talking about uh, earlier about the weapon balance and changing the weapon and giving every weapon like a fast attack uh, mm-hmm. I also think that this would probably balance it out, but on the other hand, I prefer more the philosophy of like having every weapon class be distinct as opposed to having every weapon class have, let's say, a fast attack, even though we know that this would make weapons viable for sure. Like, I prefer the idea of like giving weapon like some or weapon classes like something unique. Like for instance, if you don't make uh, like colossal weapons, have uh, the fast attack but well maybe you just make them break everything like on one attack no matter if it's an r1 or whatever or maybe you make them have instead of like having a, a quick attack just have a fast r2 release that has more range something like this we've been talking about this even uh, in dark souls 3 even the fast r2 release for slow weapons or even have like more active frames on the normal attacks Mm -hmm. so that changing the angle of the weapon changes the timing of the roll catch i feel like there's different ways like like the leto hammer shockwave from ds3 how that had like a shockwave after it landed let me let me clarify something so the the difference is that like you were talking about g like it's it's not as so when we say similar speed they're so different what i mean by that so you know how you have like the crouch attack for a great sword is like the slam that vertical hit right i mean i saw your your patch gabri like you had every weapon have a fast crouch let me tell you let me tell you the difference let let me tell you the differences give me a second Mm -hmm. Uh, so because because uh most weapons will have like a fast uh, uh, technically everything almost has a faster crouch it's only the uh, class of weapons so in reality it's the one that's missing so really it should be brought up to speed but the thing is what the way we have it in the in the mod is 
a, a, a gray sword crouch attack is easier to strafe, but it has vertical ability to uh, to uh, anti air, right? But a horizontal one is way harder to strafe because you can turn around still, like even though you could, and it's easier to hit strafe people. You you know what I'm saying? So it still has the uniqueness between them. It's not as they're not the same. They're not the same attacks. No, I disagree but, with that completely. Actually, because well, you we still haven't play played them it. the same. You free aim oh. with it. You 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 just do the wave dash and you free aim with it and you get crouch fast attack and you play every single class the same. So no, but I that's what you do right that. now. But that's what you do right now. But except no, it's weapon. not. You don't play. You don't play like a lot of weapons like that. Like if I play with curve sword, I'm not wave dashing. If I play with a, a club, I'm not wave dashing either. Like, there's a bunch of different weapons. If you play HDS, no, no, the ones would have the ones that have the one that have good uh, crouch. Yes, uh, that don't have it. Like, like a spear, most... two handed, like a two handed spear one is just bad. You get what I'm saying? You don't use that. Yeah, but uh, that's the point. Like, you don't want every weapon to have that fast crouch because you don't want all of them to be played like that. But in in reality, everything has a technically a fast crouch except colossal weapon. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Well, there's like a difference that. between fast what you had in your mod and, and fast now. Like if you take a look at Halberd, like if you call that a fast crouch, like that's that's very easy to react to. Like, I, I kind of don't crouch. understand uh, the idea. I'm sorry, I'm going to, to interrupt real quick. I, I I don't kind of understand the idea of like a, a fast crouch. Like wouldn't that like I, I I like more of the philosophy even with the uh, colossal weapons, yeah. Or like a better example would be, for example, on um, uh, the uh, Great Hammers. Um, Great Hammers crouch attack kind of it. It's like it is. It has nice synergy with the other attacks of the of the of the weapon class. It, like the crouch attack doesn't have to be the fast one, yeah. But if you have like, for example, it's it's more more important is to just have like a different frame data that allows you to mix things around, and that's it. I would say. And so, so yeah, I'm, I'm more like on the on the on the G side right here. Like, I don't feel like having like the uh, crouch uh, fast crouch attack on every weapon would be actually a cool thing. I I, I think like uh, uh, on certain weapons you just wouldn't use that, for example, because of very distinct animation or something like that. Because like we have like perfect example, for example, for example, like uh, the PS spears where your regular L1 is so much harder to react than, for example, like a. Uh, all one of the dual yeah. straight swords just because of the animation difference, despite the straight swords being faster. So, yeah. like, yeah, it, like... It, I, it, I know what you mean, but what I'm saying here, what I'm saying here, this is one one way to do it, right? Like, this is one way, and, and but the, 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 the idea that they're going to be similar is not true, because in practice, like, that's not what it is. In practice, you see them say they play different, but one is going to be easier to strafe, one is not. You get what I'm saying? So like the strafe the, thing is like it's not like, like this I, is I'm like just giving stuff. an idea. Yeah, yeah like but this is like, the strafing thing. It's like saying serpent hunter is strafable. It is uh, like strafable, but once you play a little bit with it, like you just free aim the attacks and it's not strafable anymore. Oh, that, yeah, that, that is true. Not, I, I, no, you're looking at serpent hunter from the in game. Like the one I, we were talking about is yeah, the it's gonna be harder to even like turn around. That's what I'm trying to say. It's you're not gonna I mean, be using. Lock the completely no you can you, you can you mean turn like it off, slowing right? down the player while you're, while the player is free aiming no 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 you can make you can differentiate between making it where if you're locked on or unlocked you can have when you're locked on specific uh you know like uh, tracking and then when you're unlocked different tracking you can literally do that in game but you can also make it both the same when you're locked on or unlocked do you get what i'm saying you have the ability to do that and that's what we did like when you're crouching mm -hmm. you cannot even unlock it unless if it's a horizontal weapon what's easier to hit people with D does that make sense i, I think i get it because some some like some certain though. magics yeah. are are harder to like free no, no, aim. It, it, there's no idea free aim that crouch attack because it's the fastest option otherwise you're going to be using only that like th does that make sense i i was going to say uh much to what people have been referring to i was gonna hit both marks and say that yes weapons should remain distinct have their own specific play styles their own specific identity and that that should remain just in lieu of just in case you don't want every weapon to be played the same but similarly the colossal weapons ought to have received something similar to like uh animation speed and frame data to what the great swords great axes and the curved great swords got like a couple of patches ago mm -hmm. where they suddenly got faster as a result 
yeah. uh, such as like a, a G already did talk about it, like a faster release on R2s, for instance. But I, I always keep thinking and going back to the great hammers of the Dark Souls 2 days where they always, just because that they were slow and reactable and, and quite literally unorthodox to play with because of how they moved and how you moved the character around, they always had one surprise. They always had one surprise where if you weren't, ready for it suddenly you got splattered by the by the r2 that came overhead and then knocked you on the ground for it uh, yeah. and that's something that the colossal weapons are missing at the moment wait, wait, you are talking about great hammers i oh uh, yeah the, the, the great hammers uh so the, the, this used to be like before we had colossal weapons the great hammers of dark souls 3 2 and 1 mm -hmm. were that, that that's what they were called but now mm -hmm. in this game the great hammers almost they, they put like an intermediary between <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And, and, and the great we, have, we have Clevy in the chat he just made an interesting uh point and idea so oh, he's suggesting what if like the slow weapons had something similar to like a fighting game jab where it's low damage mm -hmm. but like similar speed to like faster weapons so like they can it's, throw that out to uh, be like more competitively that's basically, viable that's what that basically what basically Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, back uh, even when Elden Ring launched, we were we were talking about how like stamp could have been that, like the stomp, mm -hmm. weapon bash, uh, even the kick yeah. could have been that as well. Yeah, but the kick is not fast enough. Yeah, no, no, like I, I don't like it being an Ash of War to be honest, being the one mm -hmm. option for that mainly because like that, that that would require you to basically make it a, a must have. You cannot change. You get what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you have to have that one, and I I don't like the kind of things that mm -hmm. do that. The, the, uh, I would like to see an Ash of War in the future that is just effectively like a dragon punch from a fighting, uh, like from Street Fighter. I'm sure you can. But, yeah, yeah, no, 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 if, if, sorry to like change the topic a little bit, but jumping attacks are enormously free even now. Mm -hmm. uh, if there was, uh, I don't know, a way to either An make anti -air? them more like, like if every weapon had a, a reliable anti-air? Or, or I was specifically, I don't know if they would give every weapon this because, again, all of their attack uh, data is different. Some of weapons are poking, some weapons are slashing or slamming. Uh, I was just looking for an Ash of War that wasn't a reliable answer to uh, somebody jumping in because even though like they haven't made like jumping in uh, L1s on like straight swords or spears that much of a commitment yet mm -hmm. like uh, you could still maybe potentially backstab some people that jump in on you mm -hmm. but that uh, I would I would be would like to see more of a definitive answer that will actually punish that those constant jump ins. I, uh, I, I, I think it, I think all weapons across the board push. like just need yeah. an expanded move set because like in previous games we had with the forward R1 attack and the forward R2 attack you know the attack button plus a direction we used to have those we don't have that in Elden Ring you have more right so, now than ever though like you have way but, more than but I'm just saying like the they, point, we could add more attacks onto it with those the, the forward R1 that we used to have. that we are talking about it's all related to the very fast recoveries. Mm. Yeah, in this uh, game, like uh, this, this is this is the main more issue. Attacks, honestly, yeah. like we have plenty. Yeah, we have more yeah, yeah. yeah I would add. say there's enough. But I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think yeah, like just like it, like for, like what Clay suggested, like having a faster low damage jab option for slower weapons, like having that as like the Ford R1. I feel like would. Go I know that Clay would Gabri was suggesting yeah. if you were listening. You're like. Go ahead. I, I was gonna say your jab is one handing their colossal weapon and having an offhand weapon. Right. You know, yeah. your, your that, that, jab is an off stock. <laughs> so, no, you're, you're not wrong. You're not that's, wrong. That's, I, I, that's, I think, I think that's the a great fix. I think yeah, the crouch system it was a beautiful way of adding a that jab. You get what I'm saying? But it was not done right. It was not like polished like elden ring to me personally like if if we if we are the devs, you know, we sit down and like balance it the way we like. I generally feel like there's enough ideas of the system, like the crowd jump, the R ones, and everything like that, to make a an esport ready game. If we could balance it the way we like, as mm -hmm. for PvP, right? And, and there's a lot of things you can do. It's just the problem is uh, we we're not going to get any of that. It's just a matter of like, you know, hoping they get this, this, and that, and we could get things done. Why? Because if you want a jab to be like, you know, the, the thing you're talking about, you can make crouch work like that, and they can be different for each one based on, you know, the attack type. 
which is missing from this game too. The one thing that's I hate about Elden Ring is the tracking is just not consistent based on the attack type, right? Like if you have a vertical hit, you're supposed to anti-air, but you're supposed to be easier to strafe. But that's not the case. You can like you have both anti-air and you can you can't strafe it. Uh, Gabri, yeah, do you have actually sure. uh, sorry, sorry, Gabri, do you have like technical knowledge about this anti-air uh, aim assist system that is in this game apparently? Mm-hmm. The, the I did a look into it, but across the board uh, because it is kind of a fucking problem, honestly. It what might be a like for so, projectile steel. So, no, 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 no. Okay, so like not not everyone know uh, know about that. Uh, I assume uh, this game has literally a assist. You oh. actually, you actually like for an example, if you are um, going to click R one and turn around. Uh, with thrusting sword against opponent that is in front of you, you are still going to hit them. And if you are going to display yourself the hitboxes, you are going to see that you have basically almost 360 freaking hitbox on that thrusting attack. I, I know that, why though. I know why. Assist, that's not aim assist. I know exactly why. I, I th- this is related to hip, like the tracking of the game of Elden Ring specifically. Uh, the tracking of Elden, like in the older games including Dark Souls uh, 3, like the tracking always ended like 3 frames or 2 frames before hitbox. In Elden Ring, Ring you have no, no, it does like that. I, I remember. I, I have. I can open in front of you and show you right now. Like the now older, like doesn't. oh, now it doesn't. Sorry, Hadjia, my bad. I, I didn't hear you. But yeah, now it doesn't. Now you have even more tracking towards the hitbox. That's the problem. That's where you feel like it's aim assist. <laughs> it's like because you have extra tracking where it, it literally track uh, to you. You know because what I mean? you have freedom of movement throughout the whole attack sequence, as opposed to having the end of the attack be locked into a to a position. Yeah, uh, uh, what I what I think they should do is what they did be- previously, and, and that made that created a huge, beautiful system to where you know you can move around, maneuver, sp- uh, like a strafe and all that, which is have a great tracking at the beginning, like from the beginning, and then close as you get closer to the hitbox, make the tracking worse and worse. The, what that will do, it will let you like turn and burn easier. It will let you do like uh, you know, d- 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 you know, dictate where you want to aim it. But then you cannot change it like last minute or something like that. Mm-hmm. They have like, to commit to the end yeah, of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That creates a good system for you know skill and and and, and maneuver and all that, which Elden Ring is uh, unfortunately lacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, and that's actually the same thing with like shield poking. Like a reason why shield poking is so strong yeah, is yep. you, you can't realistically strafe it versus anyone decent because it's so mm-hmm. easy to free aim shield pokes. Yeah, yep, mm-hmm. it's definitely related. But yeah, I think uh, that's such, that hit home on the balance stuff. But what mm-hmm. do you want to talk about, HNF? Because we don't want to yeah. talk about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, so I kind of want to talk about like just Elden Ring multiplayer as a whole because as we know, like you look at Reddit. It's not looked at favorably. There's a lot of hate for invasions and a lot of hate for just PvP content. Like, I think it was only till like a week ago they started allowing invasion videos on the subreddit before if you put it up, it would get like banned by the mods. So there's a lot of hate uh, and stigma towards PvP and invasions and duels. And I, I kind of want to address kinda, why that is because it wasn't as less. prevalent in previous games. Honestly, uh, among among the regular users, I think this is way less of a problem than it actually looks like. Every yeah, single thread, every single comment that is uh, profoundly dumb, like you know, and, and then it says something like, "Oh my God, invaders are an assholes," getting straight up downvoted to the oblivion. Uh, every single thread of this type, like people just calling the OP absolute mm-hmm. fucking moron. Like so, mm-hmm. so like this is this is not like uh, these these opinions appear. That's true, but uh, it is way less of a problem nowadays than it was at the beginning. At yeah. the beginning, we had this well, problem because well, your average eldering player was complete scrub because of the popularity mm-hmm. of the of the title. Well, it's like Still, you're making the, it sound like Reddit is like yeah. nice now or something. Uh, <laughs> it's a little the, bit better, okay. Well, I, game, I I see the progress. The, the, uh, yeah, there, there's progress, but like the game sold 20 million, right? But we're yeah. not really seeing like new players like really like yeah. start to flood into the PvP matchmaking. We're still playing against the same people, and I feel like the game from soft failed in making PvP and multiplayer in general making it as approachable as the previous games. Because Dark Souls 3, for example, it had covenants. 
It had uh, fight clubs. And those are like two oh. big things that kind of ease people into the multiplayer experience. And that's completely missing from Elden Ring. I, I do, I do want to speak on two things just briefly about the perception of PvP. I would say that the environment has always been controversial ever since like uh the olden times but when i was in the thick of it in dark souls 3 like 2017 a year already out there that 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 subreddit was still not at all enjoying invasion content they were propping up the gank content that you would see from Mm -hmm. developers at the time when they would dress up all as like we're four dudes ganking one person and that's the video like 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 they would (laughs) they would prop that up all the time mm-hmm. it i i don't see too much of a different uh, too much of a difference of what how reddit or some of those people operate for elden ring mm-hmm. but specifically the second thing now uh you 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 touched up on it though uh night with how um fight clubs like uh, the accessibility of getting into the pvp online aspect of it is relatively gone at the moment just because of like the lower player limit but even more importantly uh the fight club aspect to it you hosts are not able to have four summoned four or five summoned reds at a time as they would have in games previous and that is i in like in my opinion huge to attracting people to just fight casually uh, that there used to be dedicated streams that would do nothing but do fight clubs for Dark Souls 2 yeah. and mm-hmm. 3. In fact, that's how I ended up starting out with, with Souls to begin with, not with Invasions, but I would show up to these Dark Souls 3 fight clubs where I would see G9, I would see Gabri, I would see, well, so for some of y'all might remember this name, like Galactic Muffins or... Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, the people of old, right? And And it was a very chill environment just playing there like the moment that the host realized that okay wait don't ember up but you hit the dried finger you can summon as many people you want so you don't get invaded Mm -hmm. by that occasional invader that shows up with a great bow and totally stops your fight club Mm -hmm. even though it would be fun to be the fight club uh breaker from time to time Mm -hmm. like that it would be so lovely to actually see that at mag or see that at any other a uh, position like what what's going on in your stream right now if like fight clubs su- suddenly started forming mm-hmm. here in this little square and people knew to come here they can't do that right now because of the first of mm-hmm. all the four player limit and mm-hmm. you can only have two summoned red at once right. like it, it would be such a big improvement if in they even raised it by one and also made the summon reds go from two to four like mm-hmm. make every slot a summoned duelist mm-hmm. and that would immediately yeah, uh, like, you would see an uptick. That's how like Dark Souls Two used to be, by the way. That's, uh, Dark Souls Two yeah. when it released, that's how it used to be, by the way. It was only for before the Scholar of the First Sin. It was only mm-hmm. like exactly like that, and it worked exactly like you mentioned, Jim, where you you were able to summon three Reds at once and have a Fight Club, even though it's four. Right mm-hmm. now, like, now you can. Oh, like in, in Dark like, Souls. It, oh, go ahead, G Nine. Yep. This is this is part of the the Souls DNA though. Like I feel like we regressed a lot in Elden Ring yep. in that aspect yep. Yep. because like everyone would would say like oh yeah it's been like that in this Souls games or yeah I miss doing that and I feel like it was clearly like a core part of the online activity and now that it's missing there's a lot of people that are missing it and you definitely <laughs> feel the void there you feel yeah. it. Like, like in um, Dark Souls 3, as soon as you go to Lothric, you're getting fight clubs immediately because you have the, the bonfire on top of an elevated position and you can look down and watch people fight each other. Now imagine in Elden Ring, as soon as you leave first step, you can go to the Colosseum, which is you know a short horse ride up north. You go to the Colosseum and you can freely explore the Colosseum and you can have six player fight clubs in that Colosseum right after you start a new game. I feel like that would get people into multiplayer like a lot faster. I have feeling like when it comes to Elden Ring, things that happen to Elden Ring is, is exact, exactly the same shit that happened to MMO RPG games at some point. Mm-hmm. Like you know, in the past, like people were kind of talking with each other, like to 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 sell stuff to one another. Like they were setting up shops. There was like a public auctions and so on and so forth. 
And nowadays, like, MMORPGs are basically like you are interact with other players only for the sake of to, you know, jump on the raids that are usually automated by some sort of the system and so on, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> kind of like that social aspect that was kind of uh, visible in the previous titles, like, mm -hmm. is here no more. And I actually wonder if that's like good thing, bad thing, like, because, you know, like technically from our perspective, it might be bad thing, but there is a reason why like all these aspects are gone from the MMORPGs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the, the, the question is like, it, it's just, it's just more efficient way of, of an example, like finding yourself a team for, for like dungeoning in Final Fantasy or another game. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like honestly, like the signs looking amazing, but like, and, and so on, you, you just entering that freaking pond if and you see like a 20 signs on the ground that makes definitely some sort of, well, it, it, it looks, it's looking nice visually, but do you need it though? Yeah, yeah, you do need it. Let me let me say something on this because I wanted to wait the last one to talk about this. But basically, <laughs> the issue uh, with the, with Elden Ring, uh, I'm gonna touch on what you said still as well. The issue with Elden Ring, okay, a lot of the stuff like uh, Fight Club's covenants, uh, team invasions, all of those, we took those for granted. Like we we did we were not even thinking in our head we we're not gonna get those. We were thinking yeah. those are a given. Where we're just gonna get the new cool Elden Ring combat with jump and crouch and all that cool things, right? We're not thinking like it's not even in our head thinking that we're not gonna get those. You know, it was that that was not even a possibility. You know, and we got the uh, the confirmation that there's passive poison. And we were like, you know, fuck it, let's play with it. You know what I mean? Let's just uh, it is we're gonna enjoy it and let's, let's see how that works. You know. Even then, we didn't even think of the issue of being there, like, you know, the four-player limit, uh, no covenants. We were not even thinking at the time, the, the, the issues behind that. And then the game came. When you have a game where all of these stuff that we took for granted that we know we don't play the games without, like the PvP, what do you have left? You have left, you have invasions that are mostly 3v ones, which is a lot of people don't enjoy mm -hmm. and then you have just duels most that most people can't win them mm -hmm. most, most people mm -hmm. can't win them and then you have duels that are uh between people that you have to reach out to certain channels just to meet with them right like it's not like uh, randomly oh you know what i see a red sign here let me summon it right because of the the, the what do you call it the the the, the frog calling finger you have to turn mm -hmm. on or to see everything right like that's one of the issues but you have a situation where you don't have the soul of the pvp no pun intended you know mm -hmm. like the and um because of that your focus is so much on the balance the little thing the tiny things that you start like noticing the bullshit the games have even more whereas before they had a lot of bullshit when they released right and we didn't really truly notice in the, at the level of Elden Ring, mainly because we were so busy just having fun, like Fight Clubs and, mm -hmm. you know, Covenant and Team Invasion but, and all of that. But, you know, there's, there, there's also just the lack of incentive to even play multiplayer. I feel like that would get casuals into it more if they had a, a reason, oh, yeah. like exclusive weapon skins or exclusive spells. I don't think we those are that. good incentives. I don't think those oh, are I, good I'm, incentives. I'm just throwing ideas Spending out here, but I'm just saying incentives. previous <laughs> games had incentives. Previous games had incentives. Like the Co Covenant, like you had a lore reason to get into multiplayer, like defending the forest, defending Pontus, and you get an item that you can give to your covenant master to get a, a spell like a uh, dark moon blade like that's I, I, doubt, also I doubt after i doubt after like the plane you know like uh you know the next th third playthrough you care people care too much about you know if they get that item they're missing from the covenant too much but like what the, the, the whole interaction is what truly mattered in those uh, if there's one tr uh, real incentive, I would say I don't want to go in detour. Is like something like leaderboards for each covenant. That that is where incentive is for players. But mm. the, the, the the thing I want to hit home here is sure all of the stuff that we that we know we took for granted are missing from the game. So we're focused on the all the small details that we hate. Uh, like mm -hmm. you know, oh my God, I have hard S stock is 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 OP. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the little things we're focused too much because that's the only thing you have. Right? right whereas previously that's not what you have yeah mm -hmm. you have a broken weapon but you know you're still having fun playing all these cool ways to play the game right mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, all i'm gonna say i i would uh, uh almost like to focus on the less on what the covenants 
represented in more of what they accomplished. Uh, mm -hmm. It's less so much the rewards you got out of, like, for instance, if you were a watchdog, for instance, uh, back in Dark Souls 3, you got a weapon that was only useful on one specific build, and you got, uh, what, uh, another ring that was only useful on another specific build. What else were you going to yeah. do that covenant for? But, yeah. but what, those what those covenants served, yeah. like the... The auto summoning covenant of Aldrich yep, and Watchdog yep. and the and the and the PvP mm -hmm. boss right was that they gave new effectively new game modes mm -hmm. to yep. approach yep. the game in a fresh way that people maybe have never done before. Besides mm -hmm. just here, you help the host uh, and get summoned by a host to help them with a boss, or you kill the host, or you're the uh, you're you're the estranged uh, blue that shows up, and maybe you might get a good spawn. Maybe you show up to get see the host die, or maybe you show up to be the mm -hmm. the fourth player in line for that one uh, G nine player that shows up who kills everybody else. And you're like, oh, <laughs> am I dying? Oh, I guess I am. Um, uh, th th that yeah. that's what is missing mm -hmm. is auto summoning. The, mm -hmm. Like even mound makers of some sort, like mm -hmm. adding in a. Uh, like a, a, a type mm -hmm. of uh, cooperator or, or invader that mm -hmm. has more objectives beyond just a host kill. Yeah, like all player. that stuff got casuals into the game. Yeah. Like I, I have one friend in real life, you know, he's not, he's not a hardcore souls guy, but he enjoys playing the PVP in every game. But the reason for Elden Ring, why he stopped playing so soon is because the lack of covenants and like, you know, the lack of reason to engage in multiplayer. So like, yeah, like I said, like having the different modes of play and just everything that they accomplished in previous games, you know. Go ahead, Joe. We're going to say something. Go ahead. Uh, regarding uh, what JM said about uh, game modes, I, I would like to disagree, though. I don't think Covenant added much of a different like game mode, per se, because the only thing that Covenant changed is the number of players on the field. That's really the only difference, because no matter what Covenant you chose, like it's just elimination mode. No matter if you're invading a blue or red, like it, the objective is always the same. There's never been really side objectives per se. Mm. But I don't think that could be a bad thing to have like some sort of side objectives. And to go back to what KH Knight was saying, even uh, with his buddy here, to that's like the game's missing an incentive for PvP. I think that's always been missing in all previous souls. Like we don't need to or we don't want to always go back to how it's been done in the past and not think of better ways to do it that's not been done before. Personally, I would really like if we had like more rewards in game that incentivize like especially like newer players to give them a reason to play. And there's a lot of ways you can do this, but one one solution that I like to put out there is that on the one hand, you could fix problems that are related to duping and stuff like that, especially related on console, by not letting uh, weapons and stuff like that be dropped. And on the other hand, you can fix that problem that's only solved by duping weapons and dropping items by giving players Everyone rewards in, so in, in the form of like upgrade material like they did, let's say, in Dark Souls 2, or in a form of like a rune arc shop that we've talked about many mm -hmm. times where when you win your invasion, yes, you get your rune arc, but you can actually do something with it. You can buy all the consumables in your rune arc shop. You can buy weapons. You can buy a bunch of things. I think there's a lot of potential there that's unexplored yeah. that we've never really seen before, but that could give like a big incentive especially to uh, to newer players or more casual players to dabble into the multiplayer a little bit more. I, and on top of that, sorry, we just have to keep in mind that doing co-op also re rewards with rune art. And doing co-op, aside from getting a few runes that are split from killing a boss, there's not as much of an incentive to actually help a player go through a level if it doesn't involve killing a boss unless mm -hmm. you're just playing with your friend. So, like that rune arc shot with rune arc shot would also take care of this situation where it rewards players play with somebody else through a level and mm -hmm. then reward them with like rune arc for kills of invaders and stuff like that i, I really like the rune arc idea and i think as a way to kill two birds with one stone you know people complain about the lack of incentive to go into new game plus like there's not too big of a difference imagine being able to go into new game plus you go to the the store in the round table hold and you have the rune arc shop and like for 25 rune arcs you can get a fully upgraded weapon like for pvpers that's great because you can take all the rune arcs you've collected throughout the the first 
a uh, new game and just spend them all on fully upgraded weapons so you can jump into pvp right away and try out like all these different builds and stuff i feel like that would really help for both pvp and pve you know give new game plus something of value and give pvpers a way to jump into the action faster with brand new builds what what would um Okay, what would you guys think? Like, you know, uh, what what could they do right now? Uh, you know, of course, we know. We just want to reiterate it so we can make sure we know what we need from them, right? What would they do right now to improve the amount of people that, that are playing, uh, activity, and all of that? Like, what's an easy way to do? Like, what's an well? Easy I, way I think do solo it? invasion. So, like, with JM. Let's let's go one by one. Okay, go ahead, Jay. Uh, 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 what they should do, uh, yeah. like, uh, if a DLC were to come out, yeah. Um, Oh, so, so one of y'all brought up solo invasions. You know, what? I'll let one of y'all talk about that one. I, I personally just would like to see that player limit increased. And in. I've talked yes. about this. Yes. I've talked about this a little bit where they, the, it, 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 I'm trying to guesstimate <laughs> how exactly they might increase that player limit and to what extent, like, are they going to increase it across the board for both like the op uh, the original open world and whatever the DLC area is going to be cuz we know that where this DLC is going to end up more than likely it might be an entirely separate area from the base game and because of that maybe the lesser load uh the the load intense the load intensity on systems they might be able to increase the player limit just like how they increased player limit in the Colosseum because you're only loading one area. Of course, you can have six players and all these other uh, AI spirit ashes because you don't have to load an entire world back there. Or if it is, at least it's all you know grainy and granular, so that way it's not affecting people's frames all that much, which is part of the reason probably why four-player is the limit for open world, period, because it's trying to... Uh, the developers are trying to make sure that this game operates on Xbox Ones and PS4s. But regardless of that, when they do need to increase the player limit, at least by one somehow, if only in the DLC area, then at least that's the start. But they, uh, I don't think it would be wise to make it to a point to where suddenly you can have four players cooperating at once to the same effect that you could do in past games because Elden Ring is such a fundamentally different game. I've, I regularly co-op now because of the near and far system that they added. And three players can sometimes completely already trivialize uh, a lot of PvE just because of how PvE reacts in co-op situations. They, be, they genuinely become less able uh, and, you, and you utterly destroy them with the amount of Ashes of War, mm. the AoE and the spells that you could throw at them. You, you can have somebody using Stamp to send a boss flying into the air and then somebody in the back shooting them with uh, Comet Azure, you know, and, and suddenly there's, there's all this DPS being mm -hmm. thrown around. I don't think, I'm, if I had to guess, I don't think it's in From Software's plans to increase cooperators to four but it would be nice to see player limit go up to five. They can, uh, I mean, three v threes would also be nice. Yeah, be they, they, they can yeah. tie it. They can tie it to multi. Like when you're playing against someone, like, you know, like when mm -hmm. in, there's invader or something. Like they can they, really they do could. that. Yeah, basically, like make it okay. If you're if you don't have any invasion or anything like that happening, if you don't have invader, you, you don't have that. I think we in some way we it was like that in older games. In some ways where you cannot get the maximum unless there's invasion or something is it i forget like exactly the details but uh go ahead uh, g i don't know i was about to ask steel what he was uh, thinking would be best to improve the game's activity yeah go ahead yep. uh so there is a problem so like improve activity for who to everyone because, like the pl big player well base but like, I mean, like the goal an, is how do we get more people into PvP? Like, because honestly, yeah. like, if if you are talking about entire player base, honestly, there is no simple solution. This shit ass fucking the... garbage piece mm. of <laughs> shit matchmaking system have to be gone and have to be like, completely reworked. Because like, you know, the the fact like, for example, for the sake of for you to invade, you have to spam these fucking fingers because you are sending mm -hmm. like a one invasion request per like a one ping on top of that on like a one random location. So it's ridiculous it's, it's just like it's you know it's, it's it's just like the fundamentally system is just so fucking shit it's actually unbelievable like something like that was released in 2020 fucking too like it's you know like it's when it comes to us like you know like people that just like active, active uh, actively playing the game both like people that host 
and uh, people that uh, that invade and so on uh, then uh, overall like having the forced environment of standardized for example three versus two or like standardized even two versus two or even like a three versus one but with the requirement okay I- i'm just I, I want Thunderstone to be fucking like forced to be <laughs> to be you know to to not being so you cannot fucking turn it off yeah this is like definitely something that would be relatively healthy for the game and would immediately make so like it like the invasions feels a little bit better yeah <coughs> which but, one which item like what the... th- Thunderstone oh okay mm-hmm. but like uh, then like f- fundamentally honest like the game is so fucking like a uh, poorly designed. In the multiplayer mm-hmm. i am like i i really have no idea like if any of these would have like a bigger effect overall because like it would be less frustrating for that small portion of player base that are invaders and mm-hmm. uh, for the for people that like just going through the game helping the, 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 their friends and so on it's practically like changes like nothing they are still going to fog wall you no matter what yeah uh it's honestly like it's it's so hard for me i i think i don't really have solution like simple solution what to do besides like complete rework of this entire there's also just a general net code and latency like so like souls games have like certain quirks to its latency that you have to adapt to and i feel like the casual audience at large doesn't want to take the time to adjust to that like phantom range and all that that's something that takes adjusting to Let, and let's let's get back to that one later cage because like it's a completely different topic for that one i but actually you know, what actually, do you want to say i i, I oh, oh, you want sorry, to say. go ahead steal Okay, so like I'm, I'm just gonna quickly finish it. Like, uh, the, the, in regards of G's question, I think something that everyone would benefit from is so we actually would have legitimate work in like uh, pink filter system because, like, mm-hmm. especially on the mm-hmm. PC, uh, literally, like if you are going to turn on the console w- uh, with with Steam. Uh, and look through the commands that being sent, like through the parameters that being sent when you're connecting to people and people connecting to you. Uh, the parameters responsible for uh, any sort of the regional matchmaking or even like a, a matchmaking based on like who is closest to you and so on, things like that. Like Steam API the... has that already. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, using that. <laughs> yeah, it, it just doesn't exist. It's just like uh, there is nothing like that. Like you are you are just searching for the player base, like and you are connecting to the first person you are going to you are going to find in game. Like this is fucking ridiculous. It it makes so for like miserable experience because mm-hmm. you especially on the PC, uh you are ending up in a situation that you're connecting to the Chinese player, you have four hundred and fifty fucking MS to them, and entire freaking like systems the game is built upon just go out of the window mm-hmm. not even saying about the, the relatively decent uh, recent uh, discovery that it's as ter- it turns out uh, pc uh, packages are delayed yeah. which mm-hmm. essentially increasing latency so when you are <laughs> on 300 ms against other player realistically you are on 500 mm-hmm. it needs to be fixed though like that is a tr- it's just ridiculous. Like yeah. on PC, that needs to be fixed for sure. Like, mm-hmm. like I noticed I that. I noticed it. that. By the way, I played recently on PC. Just wanted to see how it is, and like, I'm like, what the heck? Why is everybody laggy? Why is everybody like just you know, comparison to? Uh, it just it sucks because like you know, PC has better button delay. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, but then you have delay. the yeah the uh, but then you have the issue like what <laughs> what should I do right now? Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Gina. I want to say something about that. Like after you say it, I was just, uh... okay. Well, uh, I wanted to get Cage Cage Knight on this first because he really wanted to uh, give his his, uh, his take on like what the game needs uh, to get more players interested. Right. Uh, go ahead. Cage. Well, I think like a simple practical fix that they can do in the very next patch. If you activate Runark, you can now be invaded. And that would turn yes, on solo invasions. I, I like that That's yep. really, really simple change that would make a world of difference, just like when they added Wex Dust to the game. That's a really yeah, easy, no. practical yeah. change. You turn on Runark, you're now getting invaded. Boom. And and they can make they should make Runarks more available. So like every time you beat a boss, any boss, if you beat any boss, you get a Runark. 
So, so there's more rune arcs and players possessions. They're activating it more and we're enabling more solo invasions. And that makes it, that makes invasions more approachable to people who are getting into it. Cause right now, if you're invading for the first time ever, you're already going off into the deep end. Cause you're going up against a, a gank. You know, most of the time when you yeah. invade, you're going to be fighting three players. And that makes invasions hard to approach for brand new players like who just got Elden Ring, never played a Souls game. It makes right now invasions are really hard to approach because they're always getting ganked. And if you turn on solo invasions, that's kind of easing people into the experience more if, if they have solo invasions available. When, when the bosses uh, die, like, do, you, do they get uh, like the same effect how it was in You the just get games? Souls. You like... And no, no, I'm order. saying, like, do you, do you get, do you, okay, if you don't have, don't your, get embered up. Uh, yeah. You get embered up. You don't. I, I'm don't saying, like, I, th I think that's important, though, like, to, if you want to improve activity. Like, if you, uh, the boss dies, you get in a rune arc up or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, uh, that's what I'm like saying. The, Put more rune arcs in people's possessions, and naturally, no, 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 we would get more soul invasions that way. I, I'm saying, should you, should they drop rune arc or should they, Oh, to... right, right. Yeah, in Demon Souls, you'd That's be important. forced in the body form. I think it should be not optional. Just Souls. Not, not just Demon Souls. No, like, in, yeah, Dark Souls, Souls, in Dark Souls 1, it was optional. Like, you would just get humanity, and you can choose that, choose to use that humanity or not. In Dark Souls 1, they didn't force it on you. Dark Souls That's... 3, you got both. You get the Ember, and you get yeah. Embered up. Yeah. So I think like, that's important because we're talking about improving activity. Because mm -hmm. if we're able to force that person to go embered or ruin our mm -hmm. mode, right? It means now they get to try it for just one time. Hey, you know, you can mm -hmm. play with it. If they die, then they can just continue playing the game normally. The way mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a huge way, that's a huge difference between improving mm -hmm. activity or not. Mm -hmm. just saying, like, that, uh, that, that could run aground and conflict with the the freedom of movement that the game already offers like running around with torrent like it would be extremely jarring for a player to be on torrent and then suddenly get kicked off of it and have to wonder why um like i i, I would imagine if they're trying to platform with torrent like on one of those uh you know on one of those tombstones and then suddenly they get kicked they, they get kicked off of it for whatever reason because they got uh, invaded or what have you uh, that but, might lead to a lot that's of. That's a really good they point. Can, that's a good point. And I think that's why it's better to, to be optional. No, 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 the, the, oh yeah, the, the the dungeon bit. Like if you already are ruined up and you're in an area where torrent is not available, like uh, you know the some parts yeah, of the underground it. and dungeons, then then yes, then that's solo invasions saying, yeah. there that's, would that's, be that's would be really cool. Like yeah, and I get my uh, my point on that as well. Like uh, I actually wanted to talk about this because we've had this discussion. Uh, at the very start of the game, like the devs even asked the input from the players. I don't know if you guys remember. I remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a discussion around the game. They were legitimately asking for feedback. And obviously, all the PVE crowds didn't want to get invaded at all. But ultimately, that's the system we have now is what came up. But I always felt like we, like you guys have just mentioned, like we, we missed the mark. Like it should have been solo invasions and dungeons because that takes care of like all the rising issues around the horse like you just mentioned jm mm -hmm. and at the same time it just makes it more tense to go into dungeons because dungeons mm -hmm. are really repetitive mm -hmm. as well so if you can mm -hmm. get a unique experience through multiplayer in dungeons i think like that's a good thing mm -hmm. yeah but so to go to the initial question which was how do we improve the game so that more players get interested in playing the multiplayer i think first and foremost the most important aspect definitely is the player limit like no matter how i look at it it always comes back to player limit if we can get player limit to increase even by one even if it's not six you know just a five or whatever just so that we can get fight clubs Mm -hmm. and uh 2v2 invasions like those two things would revitalize the game a lot then when it comes to pc obviously th there needs to be like a bug fix for uh the the extra added latency like that uh, you've been talking about still because that's just completely ridiculous like you mm -hmm. cannot you cannot conceivably have a game that is so sensitive latency and input timing like this one and have add like extra added delay to it that's just completely ridiculous mm -hmm. but i think those are probably like the most important things that the game could have but obviously like you can definitely add like a lot more fixes and a lot more things to make it more interesting to players like we talked about there's a lot that can be done with rewards 
There's a lot that can be done with Covenant as well. There's a lot that mm -hmm. can be done around like giving incentive for various even like um, game mode and, and changes in activity. Like uh, there's never really been like side objectives either. Like there's a ton of stuff that they could be doing, but for the most part, I, I want to keep the focus on increasing the player limit for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's definitely, I think, but besides the rune arc and soul invasions, the pillar limit is like the second most important thing that I feel like they could change overnight with one patch if they can get it technically working on all platforms. I think one thing, one thing that's like, I that is really killing Elden Ring's um, activity is truly the furl calling finger. That, that thing should not exist. I think yeah, that's, like, that's a good call by the way. Right. The fact that he, he, not, he, let me explain to you why. So I'm sure you guys know, but I just want to just people are watching. So the idea of pro calling finger becomes a double opt-in system. You're not opt-in yeah. one time, yep. you twice opt-in. You can a, a casual who doesn't know how like about PvP multiplayer and everything like that, they could literally go through the game with never seeing any anything related to multiplayer, like you know, player interaction, right? That's that's how you know, like uh, how bad it is. That's Whereas so true. previously, you can never go online and not get invaded, not get any interaction. I see a sign, you know, like imagine I'm a new player. I'm just putting myself in, in a casual mindset, right? I'm playing Elden Ring. You know, a pro calling finger didn't exist, right? I, I walk up. Oh, I see somebody's sign. I, I think, you know, if I see some sign, so I, I'm so curious what's going on. What is that? I, I click yeah. on it and then the player comes in. Like these matter, like these matter with activity. Yeah, that's and, so true. Yeah, there's, that, there's some streamers who literally go through the game and not even know that multiplayer exists because you have to turn on an item to even see the signs on the ground. That I, mean, I agree, every, it should be removed. Dude. I, I sometimes do like a hosting videos when I am done with like a absolute garbage activity in the multiplayer. I'm starting hosting and just like invading like a decent players to, you know, to do some 2v2s and so on. Uh, and uh, every single video of this type, I have at least few comments out of like more casual type of crowd that is asking, oh, you can have two invaders in your world? How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> people don't know like Not wrong <laughs> yeah like this is this is actually like this is legitimately a thing people have no idea you can literally have this fucking tamper stonk enabled besides the first finger like the fact you have to opt in with two items is fucking ridiculous right yeah yeah, it might sound like silly. Oh, you have to oh, just click two buttons. No, no, that matters when it comes to like you know activity, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then like um, what I would recommend doing from that aspect, you can't just remove an item from the game, right? Uh, what I recommend is you know how you have like the uh, the blue summons, auto summons, how it works where you turn on and it's on all the time or or off all the time until you turn it off, you know? Um, I would recommend just making it like that where mm -hmm. by default it's on. And then you use the item if you don't want it to turn her off. Like does that make but sense? And then when do you like start? That? No, that? no, it's uh, currently I right know now. You it, but aside from no. that, it's basically the same, no. No, it's uh, basically by default. I'm saying think like uh, by by default, it's you you're solo invadable. Like you know you you see all the signs, you see all of that stuff, right? That's by default. Is what I'm saying. And then you use the item to turn it off. Oh, right? okay. So you. But and then when you restart like the game, way. when you restart the game, it goes back to the default, which is it's always on. Like, does that make sense? So yeah, like, that's going to be annoying for people who legitimately do not want to PvP, though. That's a bit like forcing it upon them. No, but like that. Okay, the option is to just click an item and then that's it. Move on. Like how but it's more annoying. You turn it on. It's annoying, honest, no. Honestly, though, like being being absolutely honest, we. Um, we already have the prompt menus like available in the game. Yeah. Why wouldn't the online activities be within, like, for example, one items on the prompt menu? I would say that that feature already exists. Being play online, play offline, uh, launch function is yeah. already a thing in the main yeah. menu when you turn on the game before you even before you even have I to mess agree. around with I agree. I, agree. Yeah. I think that the moment you click online from the very get-go you are 
uh, sort of adhering to almost like the game's social contract that my you... messages in my bloodstains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the messages in the bloodstains, right? But, uh, but to a certain extent, right? I want my spoilers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, they're, they're adhering to co-op invasions and whatever the game entails. Oh, uh, you are jumping to to Limgrave, and the first message you see: Fortnite. This is what Fortnite. I needed in my life yeah. to improve my experience, dude. <laughs> you know what? Like the uh, Jim hit it on the nail there. Like we're trying to get like a like a uh, you know ways around the system. But if you really really think about it from the grind up, like why is this even necessary to talk about? Like if you already clicked yeah. multiplayer, that's it. Yeah, multiplayer. It's already, right. it. Yeah, right, yeah, right like, from the start. The, the only you thing that legitimately. In. The only thing that legitimately annoys me in, in Souls game is that we have that fucking bazillion different items for different mm -hmm. fucking reasons and so on. Honestly, mm -hmm. having like a, something like in the seamless co-op, you have that item called uh, Judicator's Rulebook, yeah? And it's essentially is a thing that allows you to set the rules of the world, yeah? If everyone is friendly, if only certain like players are friendly, if like everyone is enemy to each other and so on, yeah? Uh, I think that would be so much fucking better system to have like a one multiplayer item that is essentially just responsible for setting up your world rather than, you know, having like a dif few different items. The one is th that is enabling the blues, another one that is allowing you to, to, to your teammate to connect, another one that allows Thunder you, stone. yeah, to, 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 to invaders to connect to your world or like, you know, one invader to connect to you like all these things like this is like a billions of different items that just like are more confusing than helpful in any way shape or form i know and honestly this is more basically to be fair still they have all the multiplayer item in one section of the menu all together though yeah we technique, kind of technically but it is still mm -hmm. like you know then you have to uh, leave that menu to to see the the detailed descriptions to understand what the fuck they are doing exactly and so on yeah that you can't see the description from there you you can see short yeah. description I think huh. I think you can. I'm pretty sure you can see the you can description. See, from you you can see full, like I, I thought it's only short description. Mm -hmm. I think you can oh. see like a snip, snip, like part, a smaller part of it or something like that. Yeah, Nobody that's sees. that's my point. Mm -hmm. Like not not detailed. Like not uh, the one that the, it's not the same description that you have. Like you when you click B on the item with the explanation how how many exactly players you can get in your world and so I, on. I do I do have an issue of what we're like about seamless co op. Like you mentioned it, 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 it it's actually I'm scared about something related to seamless co op. It's so popular, right, to the point where I'm worried it gives the wrong impression to from software about like how should they go about you know doing the pvp and with that would be like making it even more limited than now because seamless co-op you require a password just to play with people right like you need to have password uh so imagine making password invasion that would kill the game even more right so i'm just worried about how like the whole seamless co-op talked you know praising it too much because I don't want them to give the wrong impression and I think nah, like that's I, I don't are. think they you well, know seamless it's... does things way better though than the yeah. base game. No, no, in some departments, but the aspect of the password just only co-op, I, I do not like you don't want that for a uh, for the entire game. You get what I'm saying? Like I think uh, the biggest uh, reason people play seamless is to just be able to seamlessly, as the name suggests, just play through the entire game without having the asshole. Co op summoning every time yeah, yeah co-op seamless yeah, yeah i i really don't mm -hmm. think you know like the the aspect of you being separated from everyone else yeah and like not having to bother for the invaders of course there's are this is argument to to some people i i am sure about that but the the main argument is just because like co-op fucking works <laughs> unlike mm. in the actual game <laughs> yeah but I'm, I'm saying i'm saying if it worked like that for the entire game that's not a good thing to have for activity it's gonna make it even worse like you're not gonna be able to like how are you gonna invade people if you're locked uh, if you can you know what i mean if they have a password you can't invade them 
Do you know what I'm saying? No, we're not talking about the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I would about. imagine if invasions exist in that structure, you, you make it to where passwords aren't affect, or don't affect who can come into your world and invade yeah. you, like, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but uh, well, what I was going to hit you with, Gabri, was uh, earlier we talked about how invasions aren't in many other souls. Like that's true, but I also made uh, like a short list of other games that like were first person shooters or open world third person. And they were also at invasions like Watchdogs, like like Deathloop, like like Dying Light. And these are games yeah. where you can, where the home team you can call them with the, with the host and cooperators could be a bunch of randoms or people who are only friends all the time. Like in Sniper Elite Five, you could just be with a friend and play through the entirety of that game. But consistently throughout that game, you have invaders constantly show up in there. The they can be random, and it was a more of a recent feature through Sniper Elite 5, like a recent update where they made it to where, oh, now you can put in a code and to where if you want to be a friend and invade friends, you can do that. Watch Dogs originally had it to where you can invade people specifically on your friends list and go and go out of your way to do that. Uh, I, th I think what we're all trying to like, uh, the, the nail we're trying to hit on the head is that there are better implementations of co-op out there that could still oh, maintain the 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 structure of random invasions and still maintain the structure of uh of random cooperation and so it's just down to from software to be able to implement uh seamlessly all of the above mm -hmm. if it's in their power to do so like i you know it i'm still curious of like how the co-op slash pvp uh structure might look like for armored core 6 for instance and mm -hmm. their armored core games for instance because i was made aware that there was like co-op pve in some of the older games just as much as there were like 3v3s and 4v4s in those other in those older games and now i'm curious of like oh is it possible to retain a random summon system in elden ring and still give the people who uh want to play from like round table hold back yes. to the open world and down down below and still get invaded by random people is it still it's, possible it's possible to do that? Yeah. it's possible to do fallen it. i think is actually doing that yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah fallen. and, we, and we, we're seeing that yes you know it's possible to do the only the only reason i mentioned the seamless and the bad light is just the fact it's selling point the whole mod was you play co-op without interruption. That's why a lot of people downloaded that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I don't want that to be seen to be, oh, this is what probably what people want, you know, just uh, separate it even more. But I I'm with you in terms of co-oping, having it where, like, you know, you seamlessly go from the beginning. I want to do that kind of co-oping, right? Where mm -hmm. I can play from the beginning to towards the end. And, you know, it's like dried finger runs uh, on steroid, right? Like, and then you get invaded randomly throughout the way. And this guy follows you to the boss fight and, he, and you both fight. And then, like, you kill the boss and, and everybody goes home. It's like a checkpoint kind of thing. Like, there's a lot of ways you can make it good. But as long as it doesn't affect invasions being random. Like, that's mm -hmm. very important to stay. Because yeah. otherwise, that would kill like the mm -hmm. activity, mm -hmm. right? And did you have to go? Uh no, I know I still got a little more time. Uh, okay. I, I would say I got fifty more minutes. All right. um, I was looking at the time, and I'm like, right. it's no. been a minute now. Do you guys, <laughs> no, 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 you guys no, want no. to talk I, uh, about uh, Arena Zen and what specifically we can add to the arena? Because I think a simple rematch feature would go, also go a long way in making the arena better. Uh -oh. Sound like a robot. Oh, Sound like no. Optimus Prime. Uh -oh. Uh oh, uh, okay, H came hip. in earlier, apparently. ISP, oh no. Uh, hello. Uh, I, we can hear you now. It just got roboty there for a yeah, second. Yeah, my connection just dropped for some unknown reason. But I was asking, uh, oh. we can talk about the arena, uh, maybe like adding a simple rematch feature or mm -hmm. making uh, duels like uh, best of three by default. You know, no. kind of like some fighting games. I don't, no. I don't know. I don't but, think so. I disagree. But, what, what what do you think? Like, how could the arena benefit from like more maps. fixes and more? <laughs> it's coming more in the DLC, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried. Hundred percent, that one is gonna be coming. In. <laughs> well, how about this? Uh, we've seen this on PC, a map editor, where you can oh, make yeah, your own custom great. map. Likely, but that would be fun. Unlikely, but uh, imagine if it was possible. I'd Ooh. love it. I'm a creative person. Like, I would be spending so many hours just creating maps and then letting it, letting everyone enjoy them for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would give us just unlimited like replay value, you know, for for like duels, yeah, tournaments, casual play. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Very unlikely. Right. Yeah, it's very unlikely. But yeah, it's well, uh, unless you like people doing that nowadays, like in form of the mods, and dude, like this is fucking so amazing what people is are are mm -hmm. creating. Yeah. Uh, no, mods are not in the same ballpark because with yeah, mods, that's my point. It's yeah. just so limited. Like you're not gonna get that same experience as in if it's implemented in the base game where yeah, everyone can yeah. just play with them like seamlessly like what yeah that, that's like, my it's point yeah separate, separate need. yeah I'm, I'm just saying that this is just like fucking great to see what people are actually doing it's just that it's shame vast majority of people mm. cannot experience it because you know like the uh entry point is just that high yeah it's not even right. about uh, like just people experience it it's just you cannot experience like how you know the the, the the like the how good it is uh you know like the potential of it because it's only limited to like five to ten people you get what i'm saying like like for example like the yeah. claymore made a made badass like map uh you, you played some of them right you played the uh steel right did you play i some think of them? i am main promoter of this <laughs> <Pretty> much, exactly <laughs> like the thing the, 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 Dude, Go like, <laughs> the, like it's completely different modes of playing the game. That's how much it changes things, right? Like that's how epic it goes. So yeah, it'll be nice. Go ahead, uh, Jimmy. We're gonna say something. Uh, I was gonna say uh, to follow up on a a point that we were trying to figure out uh, before with the multiplayer menu. Uh, I was looking at the items there. It, it effectively is what the item descriptions have. It's just minus the lore bits. You know, it like uh, if you look up the actual item description of like a tarnished furled finger, it talks about how it's a finger made of corpse wax. But in the multiplayer menu, it removes the lore bits and it just shows you the functionality of the thing. Like, oh, yeah. it, it's still very much the same. Uh, the the second thing uh, on the topic, as it were, uh, I know we were talking about arenas. Uh, new maps, of course, would all be good. I would, uh, I would like to see. Uh, not not only more maps that would be more uh, intricate, like what we ended up getting in Dark Souls Three, where there was like the the Dragon Eyrie, like a uh, little lanes that were going on there. Uh, there was also a rooftop. There was um, like like adding more uh, more variety besides just three flat circles uh, it's good it's good that that's a good foundation so that people have something to play on that is uh relatively uh even but now i would like to see them get more creative and more than likely we have seen them get more creative with maps and and past arenas all the way from one dark souls one to two and three mm. uh, outside, but, uh, outside of uh, outside of being creative i think the best thing like they could do for arena like it's just add one button like just one button there like a uh, uh play this mode uh what, what, what that does is whatever is active currently either duels 2v2 3v3 let it queue to that uh mm -hmm. as the it's issue right now with kind of like yeah, a quick match it? yeah like a quick match yeah, with quick whatever match. is available so this way yeah. you can allow 2v2s to be active again 3v3 right. Like right now, nobody nobody plays two v twos and three v three. Yeah, like it just especially with the spirit ashes, that's basically dead. Oh, yeah. it, that's another spirit thing that just reminded me. Um, doing like group matches against random right now, you can't like bring a three player password to group and and have them fight against randoms. It has to be party mm. versus party, and I think that's a big no, mistake. No, you can. No, you can't. You can. No, we we I tried it. We tried. You can't. You can't oh, you, be party you versus can. randoms. It's false. You can. I'm you, telling you, you. Yeah. I don't care what you say, you can. We, we literally <laughs> did this on the stream. A party against randoms, you can, it doesn't matter. I don't care like... what you say, you definitely can. I don't know. No, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. no, 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 Like, listen, listen. You, if, you, if you are talking about, like, you setting up the password, yeah? With your friend, and then you are playing against randoms, yeah? That's what you meant? That's possible. Yeah, like, that's, that's possible. possible. In, the, possible in the arena? Yeah. 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 Yeah, like know, if, if you if you couldn't if you couldn't get people human. if you <laughs> couldn't if yeah. you couldn't get people in such way, that means uh, it's because the arena is dead. Talk yeah. shit. Yeah, that's because yeah. the arena is dead. Man. Yeah, no, either, either arena is dead. Or, I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, the arena is not even fucking dead. The matchmaking is dog shit. The amount of times I had situation where uh, I, I was doing exactly what, sh what, what she was doing. And so first of all, arena matchmaking is working in a very funny way. If you cannot find lobby immediately after you are going to start searching, 
then you are getting thrown into your own lobby and you become a host. And uh. by, by the process, you are ending up in the situation that you have shit tons of lobbies all around the game and none of these lobbies cannot connect with each other. A couple mm-hmm. of guys in the chat are actually confirming what I'm saying. Labrizi and Furbolsos is also saying like you can't have a party up against randoms. You guys are just not there. I'm they, pretty they, sure you can. What do you mean? No, like, because like, we did like a whole two-hour like, stream where like, I, I can literally say, get like, on the game and actually confirm like you can have party of your friends against randoms. It's literally copy paste of Dark Souls 3 Arena, and then it yeah. has that. But it was like, the same in, in that game too. I'm pretty sure. No, that one hundred like I know, <laughs> Keita. I'm pretty sure you could do that. Like, there's no way like that you can't do that. The the we we used to have fun with that and every now and then. That's how we used to do it, TV2 arena uh, the, like tournaments and stuff. You know, sometimes. A few patches ago, uh, not long after the DLC arena dropped, so I did a bunch of fights like that. Like an entire night, I played with Hackrish, and we I, I all teamed up and played a bunch of randoms in two v two. I think what they're specifically talking about, uh, they brought this up, uh, and y'all can confirm with me with this. Uh, I haven't put a lot of time in the arena myself, but you cannot. Uh, they, they said you cannot have a team, one team with a password and one team without one. Is that that's, is that's that what I'm what saying? That's what I'm saying. Because, yeah. because I know that in the past, like for instance, like G9, you you and and your plus one can have a password, and you can go up against another team that have their own password. But what people are wondering is, can you have uh, a duo that is passworded up with a team that is that has no password but is doing duos. That aspect, not sure, honestly. Uh, they, like, they, uh, that's what I was trying to say. Like yeah. a passworded group versus a non-passworded group. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. There it is. I have no idea if that's working in such way or not, but like I, I definitely would prefer to not match against two randoms when I have a teammate on the voice call. Honestly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I, I would still would like that option to be a thing. Yeah, just for the because sake of I, I'm sure connect. that will that definitely will affect activity if you can only find other match made duos using a password. That they they ought to make it to where non passworded people, mm-hmm. or or maybe even make it a preference. Like, do you only connect with people that have a password, or do you connect with people who don't? Uh, right, because like I see more that... options is worse, dude. There's way too many fucking options yeah, in this game. There's way too many that. modes, way too many fucking levels. They just like to split the player base all over the fucking place. Right. Like, dude, fuck all that shit. They need like to have the arena be like one or two modes, just like they're doing it in Armored Core, like one v one and three v three, and then yeah, you're gonna is... have way more activity. No, you know, we are splitting. talking here about Elden Ring, yeah, but the games yeah, but like League of Legends. Read. Yeah, yeah, the games like League of Legends that have insane player base, constantly killing game modes that are not popular enough. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, to focus player base on that one max two game modes. Mm-hmm. And, right. and El- yeah, yeah, and Elden Ring, meanwhile, United Combat, Uni- El- Combat Ordeal, Duel, and then mm-hmm. like uh, <laughs> two combatants, four combatants, six combatants, per both United <laughs> Combat and Combat Ordeal, then Spirit Ashes, prohibited or yeah, alone. Yeah, some then, streamlining would like, really yeah. <laughs> the game. You know, yeah. we're, we're trying to see yeah. like what kind of solution they can do. I think just having one one mode that you can just QZ with whatever active. Right. There's a solution because they ba- can't just base a more. quick match, put you in whatever's active. This it's game, a band for fix anything for else would yeah. need to streamline just like what they announced with armored core that's the kind of streamlining we need here mm-hmm. yeah um, I, 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 I see what gina is saying but it, like... it's going to be way more active pvp wise just because there's not going to be any level brackets there's only going to be two modes it's going to be like way more active than mm-hmm. elden ring just because of that despite having like such a smaller player base because it will be like a lot less popular. Mm-hmm. What do you guys mm-hmm. think of ranked mode in arena? Like, just duels become ranked mode. Nah. Oh, see, I feel like if you have ranked, then you should they, like duels should be like by default be best of three. Like, you fight a guy and then you fight him again and then you fight I'm, him I'm again. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm I'm gonna apologize for a second. Uh, in regards of what uh, uh, Knight was saying, um, when you have the uh, allied only. Uh, uh, setting uh, setting the restrictions. It says Colosseum password will be used to match make members of allied team only. The enemy team will be match made using a different password. So like essentially it is like it might be like like Knight is saying in the meaning that 
if you have the uh, if you can play against randoms but they they need to have a password too, yeah which i think is good like honestly like why would you want to to be playing like <laughs> It, it's, 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 it's because it's, it's Dark Souls. It's not like a competitive shooter. Like for a competitive shooter, it makes sense. You don't want a party it, against it, a group of randoms. But this is PvP. It's competitive by nature. And what you are doing is I mean, you are like, actually... In, 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 okay, in unranked. Like if it's an unranked mode for fun, you know, let the, the, the partied up people, you know, dunk on unpartied up people. Because like it's, 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 it's Elden Ring, you know? It's not... <laughs> who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Let us... Let us... Let us pub stomp. Yes. Yeah, let me pub stomp. Let me feel good. <laughs> I just want to be let, 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 me, let me feel good about myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Um, it's not the good way to approach this. Yeah, I, I, I don't like it. Really I help with activity, no. You know, just get into matchmaking it faster. It with activity, but like it would just the experience. Okay, how do you want the experience? Do you want to just because you have activity? Yeah, now the experience you, now you is wanna, good like, for the party group and shitty for the other group, but at least we're all getting the play. <laughs> uh, on on the topic about acti like quantity of activity versus quality of activity yeah, exactly. just, just 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 briefly going from the arena actually uh, uh i have I have a few minutes left here so i wanted to get this last yeah. point out of uh back uh, back on to invasion just really quick and the activity that you find there they it, it is it, it is neat to see how the near and far system was implemented halfway through this game cycle so far and we can almost think we could we could basically thank Wex Dust for this existence, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But one thing that is actually missing from that functionality of finding people is being able to select where you're actually going to get picked up or invade. And I think something that in the future would be key for the invading and and co-op and summoning side of things, especially if you send your sign and summon effigies if you're a co-op or a duelist. It would be nice to see in the future some way to be able to pick, oh, maybe I don't want to invade Radon's beach party, or maybe yeah. I don't <laughs> want to be on Radigan's little hallway where it's all, it's it, 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 the, those invasions play, yeah. only last 30 <laughs> seconds. Like, it would be nice, like, if people don't like open world invasions, maybe they only want dungeons and legacy dungeon inv invasions. Like, give people the option to be summoned for or invade those places besides just mm -hmm. what you would have to do is get a new character only choose certain effigies at a certain time only go to certain uh areas and don't unlock others if you don't want to invade there and uh that requires a lot of like previous knowledge and know-how where it would be nicer to have the obvious accessibility and convenience of like being able to choose maybe in that multiplayer menu where do you want to get summoned? Where do you not want to get summoned? Where do you want to invade? Where do you not want to invade? You, you know, actually, from you there. actually nailed that. By the way, I I completely <laughs> forgot that most of you guys just cannot fucking do that because you're playing on the consoles. Mm. But like here yeah. on the PC on, with with the cheat engine, I for once for like many many months now choose which locations I want to invade. Like you know, like I I I I can uh, set up very quickly. Uh, which location is supposed to be avoided by the system? By, for example, removing unpopular locations from the from the equations, uh, I just speed up my matchmaking because, mm -hmm. yeah, like I'm avoiding, for example, like stuff like, uh, let's say, like super niche beginners locations on the uh, on the on the meta level, yeah, like yeah. no one is there. Like, so why would my uh, what what why would I even look throughout this location for for the potentially match match make, yeah? And yeah, that's what I'm doing. Like, I for once invade almost exclusively only open world. Besides, like few few locations, yeah, where, mm -hmm. where there might be plenty of gangs in. Must be nice. Must be nice. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. It is pretty yeah. nice. But remember, mm -hmm. I'm playing also on the PC, so yep. therefore, like my average gang squad I'm fighting against is uh, dual uh, Nagi's 450 MS gamer. So, like you know, uh -huh. something for something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get give and take. Uh, at least that's what uh, I wanted to get that last spiel <laughs> out before. I leave that uh, if y'all wanted to keep talking afterwards, uh, by all means, we, but, we got, uh, we got I'll one minute and 30, one minute and 20 seconds before an ad comes on. So how about you take that last minute to just get some other final thoughts out there before you leave? Uh, well, 
I don't know. I, I have said uh, everything else that's out there. Oh, I will say this. that uh, I, I usually like to keep my expectations low and realistic for like accounting for from software's history and what they have done and what they might do in the future. I remain optimistic, but this last bit is copium. Uh, I want the Aquamarine dagger back. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want it back in the DLC. Uh, I, I know maybe in the past we've talked about, oh, wouldn't it be nice? As an ash, like of, war an ash of war or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, however it comes back, spiritual successor or what have you, I'm coping so hard. I, I want, want, I want Dragon Bone Fist. Let me fight like Heihachi from Tekken. <laughs> Let me do uh, mm-hmm. roundhouse kicks and um, dive kicks. Yeah. I, I'm disappointed in bring that back in Dark Souls 3 and I feel like with the DLC. They really, really should bring that back. We like, need feet weapon. F- f- fist weapons. They're, I don't like the move sets of fist feet. weapons. Feet. We need feet weapons. Yes. We yes. Need weapon. We need more no, feet. We need up. more feet. Shut up now. <laughs> and, and the one send, of, one of, send him to hell immediately. That there need, is only and the one, of, one, of, one of these like weapons you. have to be called Miyazaki. Okay, and Rank is coming out right just, now, just so you guys know. We, we, we need the Bruce Lee kick. to smell your own feet. Okay, we need uh, the Bruce Lee kick on one of the fist weapons, like from Dark Souls uh, Two. I just knew on that. That's, I mean, that would uh, be that. That would be cool. Yeah, that that would be cool to have that move set in this. Yeah, yeah, like the flying kick or something. All right. <laughs> or, uh, or the original Dragon Fist from Dark Souls One, where you straight up do a Shoryuken up into the air. You know, that would. Be and and cool. also like the move that is literally so useless that you cannot use it. Yes, mm-hmm. please, more of that. Mm-hmm. But no, like, uh, it's honestly the. Uh, Dragon Fist, not wait, that was Dragon Fist. How how it was called in uh, Bone Fist, Bone, Dragon Bone, Bone Fist, Dark Souls Two, like that one is legitimately competitively viable moveset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, it's like it's and, and on top of that, you can literally fucking kamehameha with that bullshit. Like, wonderful. What else do you need in life? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I think there's a very high likely chance that we're gonna see movesets that have been in the previous games that have not made it over to Elden Ring because a lot of moveset, even enemy moveset, have already made it through. So I definitely believe that we're going to see more of the moveset we've already seen in the DLC as well as new ones, but I think it's fair to expect. You, you know which one you're going to be seeing? The uh, Vertical Ultra Grey Sword moveset from Dark Souls 3. That one's going to come back because it's still in the file. All of it, the entire thing is like ready to use. You just need to put on a weapon. That's how available it is still for, for colossal people. weapons there's like a lot of cool attacks and demon souls that i think should come back like the uh, the 360 spin attack for uh for a for a ultra grade sword like the drag the dragon bone smasher y'all remember remember that when you do like a running r1 you'd like spin around and you can hit like three phantoms at once that's like mm-hmm. the sped up version of uh gray sword from dark souls 3 running attack like that, uh, I think like also what I the, want is Black Knight uh, Great Sword and Black Knight Great Axe. Man, I want oh, these R2s yeah. back. Ooh. Yeah, that would be that would be cool. That they have nice. it too. It's, like, it's they, in the game, it's, it's yeah. in the game, G9. Uh, but you know, you well, know. it's in the game, like it's, it's all a matter of time. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a matter of time. Not only that, but it's also in the game in Elden Ring currently, right now. But it's shit. I don't know what they were thinking. You know, the uh, the freaking big no hammer, hitbox. the big hammer. Remember the big hammer? The yep. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking about making it like that. The it's Crescent so... Axe has like a similar R2, but there's no headbox on it. Like, I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, mm. I have no idea why they did that. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I, w- I will take my leave at least right now while, while the ads are rolling. But hey, it's Enjoy been Enjoy the meteor shower, bud. Thanks yeah, for stopping I'll, by, man. Uh, I'll make sure a meteor doesn't fall on me. But hey, it's good. Again, good talking, everybody. Steel, G9, Gabri. Uh, KH, y'all, y'all take Friday. care. Y'all have a great day. Okay, uh, no, the ad just ended, so just give like one more goodbye to the audience. Oh, oh, okay, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to uh, the you know, <laughs> they, they get JM. You, you, you know, the links. My name's right in there. Just oh, he's promoting the, himself. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, more viewers, like, yeah he's like, like, like the only one promoting himself. No, 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 no. Yeah, d- during the ad, I'm all, I'm all kind and cordial, but uh, on, on camera, dude, all business. <laughs> All business, send money, please, dear God. No, no, it mm-hmm. d- that doesn't matter. Y'all, y'all take care again. It's been a hoot talking to everybody. <laughs> um, y'all don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. I- I'm a nerd. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You should subscribe, uh-huh. I'm a nerd. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I, I, I do this for a hobby. I, I, I do this stuff for a hobby, and some of uh, some people are 
We're not letting him off the hook. <laughs> um, anything else like, uh, well, how about like features that would be unique to Elden Ring? Because I feel like we've been talking about stuff where it, it needs features to catch up to previous games. But what are, what are some more original features uh, Elden Ring can benefit from? Any original ideas? Features. Yeah, something like really unique to Elden Ring. Honestly, I can't think of new features uh, yet when it's like behind in like in the main things that we know you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like it's just hard to do that like we I, I, we're gonna get way ahead of ourselves from that as i was gonna say like i don't want to be uh it, it's easy list. to have a wish list oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean i kind of just want to put the ideas out there while they're still working on the dlc you know just put it in their heads like uh we mentioned <sighs> photo mode oh yeah photo mode spectator mode you know that's a, a really mode. but you know again just have that idea. We already there, mentioned right? a few features, though. We already mentioned features like the arena yeah. being able to like uh, hit one button to key to everything. That's a new feature. They never had it. I'm, th- I'm thinking something bigger, like the map editor. That's like a completely a that'd be a huge original feature. What is that, G? I said photo mode has always been a UAV. Kind of hurts gameplay a little. What a UAV is like a I don't know it's a flying is. drone. Like a drone. So basically, like your photo mode can just be like explore areas before you physically go in there. Right. It's like a safeguard. It's kind of a cheat for PVE. Well, no, in PVE, it would, it would just freeze the world. But yeah, I see what you mean. But they had it in Demon Souls and like using it to watch PVP. Like I feel like if we had the six player worlds and we had the fight clubs, being able to spectate the fights with a UAV in photo oh, no, mode. Honestly, you could integrate it as an item, technically. As some sort of, like, wisp or some yeah, other fucking it's been done. wizardly bullshittery. Like, you, you can actually do that, technically. Yeah. It's been and, done, like, in one of the mods. Like, they can do that. And, mm. yeah, and on, on top of that, like, what is worth to mention, like, uh, y- 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 when it comes to Elden Ring, <laughs> you actually have uh, the uh, spyglass bullshittery. Mm-hmm. already in yeah, yeah. You, you can like over overlook like how the entire region looks like and so on yeah mm-hmm. and see like everything it's just that it's not very helpful for it's a like pretty a gathering <laughs> yeah it's 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 not that great for gathering detailed information but mm-hmm. like the idea that they, they they had the idea right there yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, like you, you could expand expand on this idea right. and this are underway. But yeah, like having some sort of the uh like a lot of games actually when I think about it, like a lot of RPGs I have played in the past had had this 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 type of for an example scroll or spell where you can send a wisp that you have a control over and you can like fly around w- with that wisp and just like a, see stuff from its perspective. And uh, you can use it like to scavenge places and so on. That would be pretty cool. Not gonna lie, I would love it. Mm-hmm. And also for the arena, I, just I like would, a basic. I would use it for the thumbnails too. Yeah. Again, but like for right? arena, for the arena specifically, like spectator, like what Amir has for his mod, that would help. Uh, yeah. Although I'm uh, not yeah. sure how it would work. On DC. Just get a PC. Just get yeah. a PC. <laughs> Dude, I am a console peasant. My brain can't handle PC and <laughs> all of it. Shen- to be honest, shenanigans. I want to talk about that a little bit. I, 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 PC is great and all, but I don't like the... One thing I, I like about PlayStation uh, is just... I just get on and play. I don't think too much about, you know, uh, what what's what mode I should be, what, what setting I should be, what this this. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's part of it why it, it probably catch nice thinking like mm-hmm. it's more enjoyable it's just you don't need to deal with the hassle of like limitation pc or yeah. all that nonsense. yeah i don't want I mean, to like, like install want... mods either <laughs> i mean that's that's the point yeah on the one side you want like more advanced features but on the other side you don't want What's to get onto the really? platform that literally have them already <laughs> i we, can't do it did we bring up crossplay at all i don't think we did 
I feel oh, like that's just crossbow. another another obvious another thing. Another one I don't want. <laughs> like, but this is, it this would is increase something... the player count and bring I the would, whole community together. I would together. love crossplay between cross consoles. Play. Yes, yes. Exactly. Every but, like, PC player would love crossplay. So that yeah, they okay, every, then make it make it optional. Just like I how want, yeah. I don't want your shitty connections though. Like tra I trust me, it. like I I wonder if like because of for example this like a uh, discovery of delayed packages across many other stuff. <laughs> I wonder if that's even like a possible on the technical level to make the crossplay because like it, it might be not the matter of of turning on the switch like it is in many other games like it's up it, it turns out like you know that the packages apparently are distributed literally differently like on on these platforms so like it might be not even possible. it would be going through completely different servers like because for fighter z and tekken 7 these are games that launched without crossplay and now they're retroactively adding it in and they're still working on it but yeah, those games would be changing their server structure. They'd be using the Bandai servers. So if they do have crossplay in Elden Ring, when you log in, you'd be logging into Bandai servers. You'd be logging logging into your Bandai account. Um, and because yeah. of because of the success of Elden Ring, like you guys think might be like you know this gonna be hopes you know for all like new features like uh, I, 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 um. Armored Core uh, 6, right? Isn't it getting some really cool things? Like, I remember... Watching Armored Core 6 is getting spectator mode, right? Yeah, something like that. And then 120 FPS and stuff like that. Like, yeah. like the the um, technical things that From Software Art had always had a problem with, like, a lot of it is being done for that. You know, you guys may... Maybe because of the success, they might be investing in more, like, netcode and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Do you guys think that's a possibility? Yeah, yeah, like it's it might be the case. There is a one thing though, something that I absolutely despise about like from software, uh like since I only remember. Uh like the the way of the production, like of stuff and in, in uh, overall Souls games and like things that from software is doing, it is always like a scaling the uh the, the budget of, of, of these of these titles and it's uh, there is not many, like, you know, straight up, like, a huge innovations between the titles, if you think about it. If you look at them, it is, like, the most innovative was probably Dark Souls 2. Like, with, you know, with completely different, like, tools for, for managing the uh, alteration yeah, yeah. Of, the, of the moveset and so on, yeah? But, like, the, the rest of these games doesn't matter if that's Dark Souls, Dark Souls 1, Demon Souls... Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, or Elden Ring, fundamentally, like, the systems are, like, practically the same. Like, on the very foundations. They, they are game being improved on and so on, but those are, like, a sta a small steps. There is, like, no straight-up changes to, like, a base mechanics. On one, se on one side, it is cool, because the games are familiar to each other and so on. And But on the other side, like lack of these very like risky and at the same time like a big changes makes so that there is like not much of the innovation. We are essentially stuck with the same problems for like a 10 years now, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dark Souls and, 2, uh, just, I can go all day for how, how innovative <laughs> it was. And uh, honestly... Like, Mm -hmm. um, Cinder like. in the chat, he was just saying the reason why we don't get innovation anymore is because we all hated Dark Souls 2 and now we're paying the price for it. Oh my god, Dark like I, I hate it when Dark Souls people Souls. like when I argue yeah, with people about Dark Souls. By no means, yeah. Dark Souls 2 was dog shit. It just <laughs> it was like also see, see, the problem is Dark Souls 2 players hate their game. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, I listen, listen. I love I love Dark Souls 2, but I am not going to pretend it is not dog shit. Like it, it is, you know, like it's, it's like, it's, I don't like it, it's just it's just like a, you know, I, I have like an attachment to the game, but it has like a shit tons of issues, yeah? Let's make it clear. Like there is I, like a Tell there me one no... game that doesn't though. Like if... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that's that's my point. Like, you know, the, the game like Dark Souls 2 fun fundamentals wise, in, in my opinion, was like the best entry out of all the Souls games for me personally, yeah. But like uh, uh stuff like for example uh freaking uh, agility and like adaptability is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, like that, you know, that, that... This... This is like this is like that that shit supposed to be fucking removed as soon as as it was fucking implemented. Like this this is like ultimately this is incredible. Like adaptability and agility causing harm to this game even fucking today. 
like when I'm getting right in the bloodhound step and the other crazy iframes. Is that what you mean? Like you like oh, listen. Speak, blood, speaking of speaking blood, of that. Blood Hunt, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna like uh, quickly get get back to uh, Blood Hunt Step. Like Blood Hunt Step is m- like the original Blood Hunt Step of uh, uh, of uh, the patch 1.2, like the one that that the game released w- with, was maybe minimally worse than regular rolling in Dark Souls 2. No, like dude. like no way. I don't believe. I, I I tell you I tell you like I'm talking because like on the high adaptability, you basically you have to be max level. That means you have shitons of stamina. That means you can do like uh, instead of like for example like that four or five rolls. It was sixteen iframes. It was sixteen iframes in Dark Souls. It was too, six so. exactly sixteen iframes. It was BHS. Yeah. It, did it have it, the recovery that BHS did though? Oh no no no! It was it had uh, even, even better. Ninety six percent iframe plus overlap. That that's because the recovery was low. That's how you reach a hundred percent invincibility in Bloodhounds. That I'm sure you could in it Dark was... Souls too. But you oh, you you, you, you had one hundred percent invincibility with backsteps in in Dark Souls. In Dark There's Souls a way to roll max between, agility. There was a way to roll between another roll tech. I forget it was like it's been a while since I played it. Like where you you, you do two rolls quickly. That's what made it broken, you know. You can like literally yeah, get quick rolls, now. but okay, okay. Listen, but like let's let's make it clear. The problem uh, wasn't like uh, about about rolls itself. I mean, it was too. Like the sixteen frames is insane amount for the, for the roll, especially with uh, with the we're length of the. We're looking at you. But you had <laughs> you, you had you had like eye frames on back steps in Dark Souls too, and you had nine eye frames on the back step. Which means you could spam backstep and actually never be in the fucking vulner- vulnerability frames. Um, it's related, but like uh, I want to talk about something very important. Me and Frosty will mention the in, in the video, but it's very it's major to like the state of Elden Ring's like mentality of the people. I, I noticed I don't know because like uh, there was no different game modes. There is no fight club. There is no this this and that. We focused too much on the combat to the point where. And especially because of the leaderboard, we started anytime we feel uncomfortable with something like, you know, oh, my God, uh, this is uh, OP right away. Like they jump to the OP, like they're they're stressful and everything like they jump to the ban, ban this, don't use it. This guy is, a sh-, you know what I mean? So uh, with Bloodhound step being like, you know, effectively halved iframes, I personally think um, jumping and saying like it's OP and all that. Normally, I would say, uh, you know, when you have uh, iframes to recovery cancel. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Like, people still saying that Bloodhound Step is overpowered? That's what I'm saying. That pisses me off. Nowadays? Yeah. They still ban it in the leaderboard. It's because uh, they don't know it's changed, right? No, they they say because of recovery cancel. But the thing is, like, what what, what does it have then? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it has less iframes, even the distance is there. But like the way it works, uh, even if you have uh, less, uh, uh, even if you ha- able to recovery cancel, it doesn't matter when you can get hit during yeah. you move any of that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, agree. I, I personally like I've fought like, you know, the patch has been out for over a week now. Like I feel like I can talk more comfortably about the patch and I definitely don't have any issue with either Quick Step or BHS. And mm. So much so that I don't re- really, you know how like how much I use both of them before. I really don't use them all that much now. You're either. the number one promoter of Bloodhound stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, I really am. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, G9, for that guy. I, I could find my Bloodhound stuff and start hey, using listen, it. <laughs> probably the biggest reason why we got to, until this nerf, okay? Because yeah, 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 I probably was kidding. also the one who complained about it the right. most. This no, y- you showed why yeah, why yeah, it was broken and why it needed to be kidding. nerfed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was just funny. Uh, like every time you put blood on step G nine. <laughs> we... The first video. Oh my god! It just makes I, me I cracks think, me up every time. I think, I think the reason why G nine was complaining so much about BHS is because he wanted to match the amount of the views he had on the BHS tutorial video. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> um, it's it because... was constant race. <laughs> 
Speaking of invasions, we've got like million views or something like that. <laughs> yeah, we're almost at a million. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> we, we, we haven't talked about level scaling for invasions, actually, right? Actually, you know what? Give me a second. I I need to make a screenshot for like you know to to remember this moment. Okay. Before bro. we go to the next topic, Kate, we need to talk about this because this is major with our community right now. Like the in the PvP. Like, no, I'm saying oh, the mentality no. that people just jump to the bandwagon as soon as they have, like, their cortisol level rise up or something. Like, they're stressed. Oh, my God, I'm stressed, you know. like yeah, the well, That's humanity. That's, that's, not, that's not exclusive no, to no. Souls gamers. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's actually been amplified in Elder, I feel like. Because the uh, previously, that we would have issues like that. But, you know, we try to adapt to it, learn it first. And then, you know, later on, after, you know, Months, months. Yeah, I just want clarification. I just want to ask you something. Which which players are you talking about here? Are you talking about redditors? Are you talking about people? Yeah, in the because like are you no, 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 no. Uh, uh, so the the ring, the ring, Elder Ring PVP Discord, you? like uh, leader ladder uh, players. Then no I mean, one cares about the ladder. Yeah, like I, I, I agree, I agree. But there, like, there's I, like I, a, there's, this is very small sample. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But that, I just we need to talk about that because, like, there's still some people that still thinks that you know they're great players. I mean, but, you're always going to they, have uh... some people for any particular thing that you can only imagine. Right. You have you have some people that are gonna tell you the Earth is flat. You have some people that are going to tell you that uh, by taking the vaccine you're getting the, like uh, you're getting chip under your skin. <laughs> yeah, you you're gonna have like and, and gonna be absolutely serious about. It. You're gonna have some people. Uh, that's gonna tell you they are yeah. like uh that doesn't matter stigmas, stigmas are always gonna exist it's just, yeah, it's that like, doesn't matter because of like rule like, making you know, like tournaments uh, everybody now is gonna be you know talking about oh this is why is this bad i should bat it too even though they're not part of it you know what i'm saying like um you should discuss that with the ladder cord because i mean it's not just ladder yeah, cord yeah. it's also and, outside of that the tournaments well i mean it's it's, uh, it's a responsibility of the individual to, to have an open mind and like really test things out um as for like ladder and pvp cord and tournaments i um, just i just want you know i if you want like really to talk about ladder players i'm gonna tell you like this uh i think like currently in the eu one of the of the best players like for for once, like for a while, was uh, was Dark Soap, and he's like very good player. But the moment he's entering like the the actual like a field of how the regular game plays out, with you know like a quick steps BHS, I'm not talking about this patch, but previous patch, he was getting like kind of lost. And like that's that's the thing. Like the mm -hmm. the gamers on the ladder like uh, created their own environment. They are playing with that environment, and now play a different patch, game. Yeah, and <laughs> after after the patch, like uh, that freaking uh, system that they worked on themselves, like was completely flipped over, and <laughs> like e they, they they everyone have to learn the game anew, and also oh. this like a uh, like more like balanced system that you had on the ladder than you had actually like in the in the regular game also got completely flipped I, over I, I, so these people are so confused right now and they have yeah, no, no idea yeah what I, to I do i believe ladder that. canceled sorry, their tournament for this month because sorry, of the patch okay I, I want to make an important point related to what steel says now i want to take a bit of a, a the stance of like a counter argument to that because to the defense of like people who actually are trying to play competitively there's definitely like ashes of war and like a lot of options right now that kind of destroy some of the skill that's in the game like when you think about like how double spear plays now how like i parmer and always stuns like uh, storm stomp or storm assault and stuff like that is now like there's a lot of trivializing like timing and spacing that goes into a lot of the new additions so like people being unhappy about that especially in a competitive setting makes a whole lot of sense to me like it it makes sense because that's definitely problematic and some of these things absolutely need to change for sure yeah, yeah. i just want to make sure no, no. like everyone it's, it's specifically that. i'm talking about things like that have been changed like for example bloodhound step and quick step are being now still banned you know and i'm like mm -hmm. okay are you kidding me did you guys play the game like you just see uh, uh it still has recovery cancel. That's my issue. Well, like, you know, well, d PVP core they did cancel their tournament for this month because the changes were so big. So they're probably going to do a lot of revamping of the stupid, rules for next though. month. They should just allow everything and figure it yeah, out. That, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, That's how it's it just be. some pussy shit. Like just fucking <laughs> unban everything and see what fucking works. Like, like do a do a test tournament. People, like, everything allowed. Let people like assault each other. Like what's 
It's yeah. the biggest that's definitely money. what it should be like. That's definitely at the right because nobody knows anything. Like there's so many things that are unique and different ways to play right. that it's just way too early to okay yeah yeah this is P- this is still broken or P- like pvp thing, yeah. cord is your baby gabri i feel like you should get back in there and um make some and make some switch that, ups nah, hell no, dude. <laughs> no <laughs> man it's it's stressful no, like don't, don't, don't be another people, amir like amir <laughs> wasting so much time arguing with people on Elden Ring pvp discord uh, have like, you joined I mean, part of so him right well. now. <laughs> It's just like, like can't beat him, join him, you know, like that kind of. <laughs> yeah, like I like this. It's it's, it's actually legitimately then there's there's not much of mm-hmm. point. Like we, we come see, we'll be fine. Like they they will figure out like eventually what is actually fun to watch and play, mm-hmm. and they are going to yeah. But but yeah, like the the game right now is just like such a fucking different beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Like complete uh, mind reset needs to be up uh, like. Uh, applied for the sake of to to enjoy mm-hmm. this game you cannot think about the game in the same way like it was like before uh, a lot of the previous experience like might actually cause you to to lose more ma- lose more, more more matches than win them because yeah you're gonna like for example use the habits from the previous patch that completely doesn't work anymore it is just the case yeah mm-hmm. yeah um, uh, I'd like to talk about one more fundamental issue before we wrap up. Before we wrap up, um, level scaling with invasions and arena. We can start with invasions first. Um, right now, it, Gina, you do more invasions than me. Like, how is the scaling for invasions right now? Like, where it's at? Really bad, and it's been need. It's been in need of fixing since, since the game came out. It still needs fixing. It's not hard to do. Just make it so that people that are higher level are penalized when they play at lower level, even to a point where the people that are playing at their own level bracket, so in their original level bracket, should have an advantage over players that are playing outside of their level bracket. It's really that simple. I don't know. We've never really seen it for any souls. The scaling's always been bad, so yeah, that's mm-hmm. that. Didn't uh, it, I think, when Bloodborne, I think Bloodborne had a patch where they made a significant change to the level scaling. Like before, there was no scaling, and then they added level scaling to, to Phantoms. Didn't they make it so that like their health would be similar to the host in, in Bloodborne? I'm not sure. I, I uh, the, my only the... experience with Bloodborne was during the first like a month of the game, mm-hmm. where I was waiting 25 minutes per one mm-hmm. invasion, <laughs> and average average uh, loading screen was taken two minutes to load. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, that was experience of all time. I, mm-hmm. I don't even ever fucking want to. to I look mean, it's at this it's, game it's been years for me, but be, I think there's like a heavy like health <laughs> and damage I'm penalization on, on on on. I don't think I don't think a damage. I don't think a damage and stamina. All of that the things we get is the way to do it. I, I think the way to do it is like I, Gina. You touched on this a while back. Um, like just cap the freaking p uh multiplayer oh, yeah. to a cap, level cap man the fucking game lower just <laughs> like okay 700. and then the way to do is probably not that hard too like think about it imagine if the the people who join like the multiplayer the maximum if you if you're level 150 or below you're able to do any you know the pvp co-op and all that right if you're above that you can level up and go above that it's no, you, don't, you don't need to limit them you're not able to connect to people but you're able to de-level your character. You know, you have you have the respect and everything. Yeah. Get an option to de-level, and then like just don't let them connect. Just uh, when they want to play with their friend, just de-level, and then uh, they they have their soul uh, saved somewhere, like a soul memory, but it's not used for matchmaking. Uh, and then they can like use it again to go back to their level if they want. I'm glad you brought up de-leveling because that's something we haven't had from Demon Souls, and there are a lot of people that want to get into ladder and get into competitive PvP, but they have too high of a level character and they have no way of de-leveling that's another fundamental feature they should add for the dlc being able just to the best yourself. way to clean it up because like this this lower your status yeah, to uh... fix it now yeah it's probably the best way on how to fix yeah. it now like mm-hmm. the, I, I overall game, though they should definitely have a, a cap Mm-hmm. I I overall I just honestly for me like you know I I for example very very often like I listen to to these discussions like that's that G for example has with his chat about uh, mm, about uh, about the the meta level and and importance of it and where it's coming from and so on and I just kind of realized that like a, the, as, as many people we have as many opinions you are going to have and honestly like people like are so divided in this discussion and all of that just 
to me absolutely doesn't make sense like the system is fundamentally fucked by the fact like you can just level up without any limitations we really need to have a cap like for real no, like no, some no, no. Sort the of... cap is not necessarily needed though like if you can it limit is. the inter no, it no, is like... Like... Yes. It's no, I it, no like, like if do you, you, do you see where I'm going with right like you limit the, the interaction with PvP to only be from level one to level one fifty can I'm giving an example of the level right and then like uh, that necessarily that uh, in a way in essence does the same thing what you're asking for but it doesn't limit people who want to level up max level to do that you know what I mean not like they the they gonna be able to level up to max level just max level is not going to be 700 it's gonna be 150 and it won't allow you to have like all the stats like yeah. you know like maxed out like uh, maxed believe out me I, I like that system PDE better too, yeah Bri, that's the thing no I like the, the system of limiting the level in general across the board better if, for, even for PB me personally you get what I'm saying like because it makes even I, I want my you know build to be to matter I, I don't want it to be like where even for PvE, where like I can just level up all the stats and be good, right? Like you know, but like you have. Uh -huh. Sorry. I'm looking at it from the perspective of like these guys who just who like you, to be just. You don't want jack of all trades. You want builds some matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I I disagree with that because you know I throw my opinion out there a lot uh, on the channel and everything, and I get a good idea of like how many like, redditors agree or disagree with me because there's always a bunch of ones in the comments. I would say that the level cap around 200 is something that I rarely see any PvE or disagree with even. It's very yeah. rare. Like, this is something that's, like, widely accepted. It's not yeah. something that's hard to push. Competitive meta still could be, for example, let's say, let's assume that, like, uh, you would do, like, competitive meta level on, like, 100 and people would fucking do duels. Like, because you can absolutely optimize builds very well even on level 100. But like you have a lot of, for example, tools in the game that like the comp like the competitive meta of 125 even is not enough for the sake of to like have full pleasure out of playing with certain setups because like we have a lot of, for example, unique weapons in the game that have sep like you know the se not separated but uh, split and scaling. Of war is the what you mean, steel? Yeah, if yeah. I want true, to true. spam Ash of War and eat No, my I want to spam my so ashes. I, spawn, no. I need to have 150 <laughs> levels. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for real, though, like you have, for example, like uh, right now it's not the problem, yeah, but because like they, they buff the weapon. But back in the days, like for example, Morgoth, uh, Cursed Sword, if you are not going to, to get yourself certain amount of the stats, like splitted stats, then you were simply not doing damage with that weapon, yeah? And uh, like I I I tried to optimize, make somewhat like a optimal and fun build to use uh, back in the patch I think 1.05 or something like that, and it was very hard to do it on meta level 125. Like you know, like little bit higher was was okay, but like you you wasn't like a hitting enough soft caps for the sake of you know to to actually make it work very very well. And uh, from that perspective, like uh, I think like like level two hundred would be just enough because you can like you 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 can like if you you don't have that problem, you can make basically any build dedicated to the web uh, to any weapon in the game. And maximize its damage, and everyone would be happy about that. I I, I would say, mm -hmm. like, uh, anything above that 200 is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, what about in the arena? Everyone trying to connect to the arena is like scaled to like one certain level. So if you're above or below either or, you'll be scaled to like 125 by default if you're playing in the arena. How do you feel about that kind of suggestion? It goes back to the cap just being a better solution. Yeah, mm -hmm. honestly. Well, for, like, for sure, some kind of cap is needed. If it's either the method I said or that, like just some, like that's the best way to solve this idea of like over leveled. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's just no way around it. This this idea of lowering your health or lowering your, it just doesn't work. No matter how you do it, like how much do you want to do it? How much should you lower it? Like it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I uh, love, oh Jesus fucking Christ, I, I am looking at uh, Knight's stream as we speak, and there is legit competitive match going on, where like one player <laughs> is just fucking lagging to the oblivion, like teleporting across the entire arena, 10 out of 10 yeah. competitive experience, I gotta admit. <laughs>
<laughs> Those are definitely the highlights of tournaments when you have people shitting right. the bed in your connection. And <laughs> you can see me and Dante's face. We're like, okay, what do we do now? Uh, I guess we just... This guy automatically loses by the vault. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, honestly, like honestly, like for me, when it comes to the matchmaking in the formula of the Souls games, the best solution I have seen so far is just matchmaking from Wulong or Wushort, like some prefer. Like you know, not the gameplay itself, but uh, matchmaking. <laughs> it was people it stopped was... talking about that game pretty quick. Because, came because out. like it literally, it, it's the it's, it's the issue we had with a lot of games that try to uh, it, like you know how you have the infinite tracking on everything, infinite like range on everything. Like it has all that problem in there, and it's just it's yeah, not yeah. Like the the, the <laughs> gameplay itself on Wushart is not that great, and that's that's essentially the thing. Like the the game got killed by by just like very fucking poor balance and like playability is also kind of dog shit and uh, yeah it's uh, but when it comes to the matchmaking rules and matchmaking system as invader on the level like the max level is 150 i think uh in in uh, you are maxing out every stat in in Wushort on the level 150 and as level 150 you can invade level 20 you are getting scaled down and you are actually feeling like level 20 Mm-hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. Actually. So, so there is like a you know, Alto. It's still like it. It is not even nearby if we just had like a proper level cap, because mm-hmm. you are still like you know, you 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 feel like level level uh, level twenty. But that also means if you have certain build prepared, and you are adapted to, to you know to to use certain abilities, and then out of blue, like you just cannot fucking use these abilities. Because you are getting scaled down to, to to level twenty, it is not good experience too. You know, this is this is what competition does, bro. Like like competition, if there is more of souls like kind of games, right? Um, would just basically, uh, you know, make from software improvise. You know, like oh, that's uh, oh, why I and are praying for the success mm-hmm. of Lords of the Fallen. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and like 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 one 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 to give you an example of how competition is good. Like uh, for the there was a game that we thought it's gonna be great. It's a it's a battle royale like Souls like battle royale. I forget her Narca Blade Point or something. Oh yeah, that one, that one. Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Let, no, me, no. let me get to that point. Let me get to the point. No, no, I'm not trying to say like get it, make it a battle royale. So to give you an idea, I played that one. It was fun, but it had the issues like the the, uh, the Wulong issues where everything has infant tracking. Everything had like it's just not a, not a so game like, like, like you know the, the, not... the Naraka is uh, movement based game. It's like more similar to. Uh, honestly, it's in its own category. I cannot say it's like more similar to anything. It's, it's so, very so, so... very unique on its own. Yeah. So like for example, like I. I uh... Part of like one of the ideas of, of modding, I, I enjoyed like change, you know, getting ideas how we could improve combat for uh, souls, right? One of the things that Narka did, and I, I, this is where competition makes everything so good. Um, imagine if uh, souls, um, you know, at the combat had the running R two instead of being just a running attack, right? It would be a uh, a charge, like as you click the running R two, if you tap it, you get like a, a the the release version of the of the R two. But you have that quick dash. Have you played Sekiro? Who played Sekiro? When you when you do a, if you're okay. running, you click R1, you do like that running attack. But if you hold it, you do like a charge version of it, yeah. it during one. Yeah. So Naraka Bladepo had that for every single weapon class, right? Imagine if you had that option for combat for charged like for running or... R2s. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. That feels exactly. like such an easy idea. Why haven't we done and that? I, yeah. uh, overall, if we are on it, I really dislike the system of the uh, light and strong attacks. I think like the yeah. game would benefit so much if the difference would be between just like a, a horizontal attack and vertical one, attack two, or for an example, horizontal and vertical. I agree. And like, mm-hmm. and for example, like you know, the the heavy attacks would be in the form of the charge R two attacks. Like so, you know, like the let's assume that all the R two attacks would be like let's say like a vertical, and you would also have like uh. You know uh, the 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 charge version of of this, mm-hmm. yeah. Like it, I I think that would be that would open like more options because I I, yeah. I, I it, do it would give everything that, a purpose. Like right. I I have feeling like it is just kind of for, 
if you have that rule of okay every single r2 attack in the game must have less act uh, less uh, startup frames uh, sorry it, 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 it must be like a, it must be longer startup than the r1s by pr- principle because it is called heavy attack it kind of like it is limiting honestly yeah. like it's, even it's, like it's Sekiro, Sekiro approved this by the way what you're talking about basically like you had one button for all attacking r2 is not like uh, the normal attack which is uh, you know, you, you tap it, tap it, you get normal attack, like as if you get, you know, like uh, in Elden Ring or Dark Souls. But then anytime you hold it, right, you get like the charged R2. So technically R1s and R2s of Elden Ring and Dark Souls can be in, put in one, you know, like in one basket, in one button. Mm-hmm. And, and then R2 could have a, like a, a similar kind of idea, but instead of being all uh, horizontal, you have vertical version of that, like you say it. So like I, I, it's definitely limited. You, you can be really do so much uh, from that aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have you have game called so essentially like the Lords of the Fallen from 2014. Uh, like despite many people really disliking this game, uh, in my opinion, it had a lot of things that did right, and part of them was exactly that. There was no heavy attacks. It was. Uh, it was like a vertical and horizontal type of mm-hmm. attack. Then, like the studio that is responsible for that game, Deck Thirteen, like mm-hmm. they they had two another titles. One was called, well, I mean, it's, it's both Search, like it was the Search and the Search Two, and like they also had like only like a vertical and horizontal mm-hmm. attacks. And in the actual combat, you was using like even in PVE, just like you know entire moveset because mm-hmm. like it, they, everything felt more balanced. It seems like mm-hmm. like the separation of that, oh, it must be heavy attack, is a little bit limited. Right. Yeah, yeah like in some weapons, the entire moveset is all vertical attacks, um, like, the, <clears throat> like the axes, for example. Just vertical, vertical, R2s are so slow, so like why use them, just use <laughs> R1. But like making it horizontal and vertical, like it would give each move a purpose, you know? R1 when <laughs> someone's strafing you, R2 when someone's like backing off. Uh, th- th- really that, th- that would require though like tracking to be balanced around that too like you know like how we said earlier tracking elder just dog shit mm-hmm. it's, it's just not you know uh, com- like skillful if that makes sense right well that would require balance around that too but right. the point here the point here like that's what competition does man like i i, I want something like that in, in the next soul game to be where it, instead of so have that feature, but instead of being on a game like Naruto Black Point, where mm-hmm. you do it and then you fly over to the next area of the of the game, uh, it will be like much more grounded in a Souls game. But it's just like such a good mechanic. But mm-hmm. uh, th- like I would not have thought of any of that until I played that game, and you know that's the kind of yeah. like thing I want to see mm-hmm. more from uh, Souls like games. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I'm, so I got to get ready to leave soon. So I just want to wrap up one more thing. I want to mention the from software. Um, when you use consumables in the arena, I feel like you should get those back. Like whatever consumables yeah. you use in the, in the arena, you should get that back. Because one of the biggest problems with Elden Ring as a whole is just having to farm for consumables <laughs> as opposed to buying them um, like in the previous games. So like, not even fucking start about. Jesus. Yeah. So it just it, it takes it takes people out of the matchmaking because now they have to go and farm for items. Find from soft. Just find a way to remove that process so that way people can stay in the no, matchmaking. Stop. Your game is not MMO. <laughs> <laughs> let let people keep playing multiplayer and not have to worry about losing their consumables. That's that's can all we, I gotta can, say. Can we have the like the, the, the physic uh, refill or whatever? Like you know, the, they that have that in the mod, system. right? Like yeah. there's a mod. We're talking about in the game. I don't like it's, it's easy to do. Is what I mean. Like they can yeah. just have phantoms. They die. Give it. You know, bring it back. And that's just such a easy thing to do. That would be like great for mm-hmm. you know. Combat hey, 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 hey. Listen, <laughs> can we have a little bit curiosity, Skarner? Curiosity number one about Elden Ring. <laughs> to farm the bolus that, that is countering uh, uh, rot. Uh, the, 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 how that's called? Bolus. Like the. Oh my god. I. So, well, no matter. You have to spend entire 20 minutes per one bolus to actually craft it on the average uh, so yeah uh, th- that was curiosity number one how, how very, easy very is good. it how easy is it to get sleep arrows by the way like, no, sleep hard... arrows? Well, think about golem you arrows. only have like you a... have a limited amount per playthrough pretty much That's uh, it depends Dude. which one 
Because that shit is annoying. I fought some. I fought someone like recently, like well, he has light roll with the you know the bow build and stuff like that. That shit is annoying to fight. You <laughs> have you have like a two arrows, one li a little bit stronger ones, and those are limited per, pay, uh, per, uh, per playthrough. Another one is a little bit weaker, applies a little bit less status effect, but can be farmed infinitely. But to farm it, like you actually have to fucking sit for hours, like you know, to to get like some sort of reasonable uh, ammo to to actually like use in the PvP. No, no, and yeah, the reason why I'm important. saying that because like on PC, everybody can just get infinite amount and then go back. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then uh, the the guy that I played, he was on PC. He, he's just the most annoying fight I've ever had, like in a while. He just runs and just so, so <laughs> sleep arrows and like, even if you dodge it, sleep. You know how sleep works, right? It just um, that in itself needs requires balancing the the things they have too. Like some things should not be so easy to get. You know what I mean? It's uh, the light roll, Gabri, because you can't punish him. Because that, that's true. Roll. That's true. It's freaking the stupid light roll. It pissed me off. Yeah. Uh, use the whole spear. Watch him in light roll is balanced. <laughs> Any other last second suggestions before we wrap up? Uh, G nine, how about you? Yep. Just use double spear, bro. <laughs> just use double spear. <laughs> Gabri, how about you? No, that's it. It was a good uh, conversation. Steel? Light roll is balanced. Please bring back 1.06 light roll. Alrighty. I guess that's it. Uh, to the audience, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you to all my guests for coming here to discuss Elden Ring and how to fix it. And um, thank you to Bandai Namco and FromSoft. If you are listening, thank you for listening to us rant for three hours. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot from it. Hopefully you can take some of our feedback and put it into the DLC. You know, hopefully it's not too late. 